perfect. Perfect. Hello and welcome back everybody to the G-Town Podcast. My name is Brendan Brillo. I am the main host of the G-Town Podcast. 
How's everyone going on today? What's up, what's up, what's up? Um, before we start the podcast, as always, please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe. We are live on Spotify. Please do check us out over there. Um, our Instagrams are also plugged in there, so also please do check that out as well. What is up? We got Sesson, Prada, Prada Man, always on, on the production. We got Richard. What's up, man? Uh, we got Mr. Aaron Nguyen. What's good? What's, what's up, good? Sir? And we got our special guest today, Mr. Jason Wong. What is yeah, good, yeah. yo? Hey. Yeah. What's up? What's up, man? It's Thank you so minute. much, Rob. It's been Happy a minute. Thanks for coming up, man. It took a while, but finally got it going. So. I know. We're we are on the fifteenth episode, guys. So thank you guys for tuning in. We can basically almost call this season two now. So like half the season done, fifteen episodes. It took us about like how, how long has it been, guys? Like two, three months now. I think it's like one episode a week. So one episode a week. Five months. Five months. Five months. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Four yeah. months. Four months. After yeah. Christmas. Yeah. 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 yeah that's right. That's January. right. We started yeah, in January. So. Yeah. Wow, it's been, it's been a long run. Well, to start it off, uh, we have Mr. Jason Wong. He is uh, the, one of the big names in co-working movement in the Lower Mainland um, and the owner of, of the, our office where we shoot and everything, Beta Collective. Thank you so much for hopping on, man. Uh, My pleasure. Yeah, the one thing I want to quickly touch up on, we've t- we talked about it before in, in our episodes. I don't know if you guys have seen have heard it or not, but uh, how we met Jason. Um, basically, it was like a quick quick little email of how, how we first met, I right? Think so yeah, yeah, we were we were we were looking out for like an office space before we were starting up the podcast. We didn't initially have a place to look at. We were looking at like I was on Craigslist, and, like looking at all these spaces. It's like oh one k a month. They're like oh man, yeah, yo, we're we're not we're, we're not gonna do that, man. Yeah. And then it was so hard. I was I was actually looking for like two weeks. Really. And okay. then, um, and this is like one this one time. I don't know. Like, do you guys think like like Google and like smartphones? They they listen to to whatever you oh, whatever yeah. you're looking I'm for. Definitely, yeah, definitely. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact, That's right? A fact, That's a fact. Man, like. Magically, one day I'm like, oh, office space is in Surrey. I swear to God, I've searched this like five times before already. For some reason, Beta Collective never came up. Wow. It was like the first link that came up. I'm like, oh, sick, sick, sick. I don't know if you're running ads that time or something right. to get it on top <laughs> of the Google search or something. Yeah, but then yeah, like, yeah. I, I got it and I looked at it. And I'm like, yo, this place is like dope. Uh, I, I was like scrolling through their website and everything. Um, like the first thing I noticed was like uh, affordable spaces, right? And um, very uh, Office space looks it, almost like exactly how, how I would imagine it for for like our start for like our startup, right? Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, yo, this is it. And it was like it was like thirty dollars an hour. We're like, we're we gotta roll here. We gotta do it. And like I, I hit up Jason, right? I, I was super nervous, like right. <laughs> believe it or not. But I was like, yo, should I hit this guy up, man? Just like like I don't know, like we sound sound a little goofy. This is so far yeah, far yeah, far yeah. pitched, right? Yeah, young kids, you know, like, yeah. like with no followers, like doing the first episode. I know, yeah. He's, he's, he's gonna he's gonna let us do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, and then I I hit up Jason. Um, such such a gracious guy, so uh, like so welcoming, and um. I hit you up. I give you a call, right, or something like that. Do you do you remember? I know it's a while back, but did we talk on the phone the first time though? I, don't I, I think I think so. Well, hey. first first was email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, I think it's I like, gave it's like dating. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, like just, just, just text you a little bit. It's just like, like, hey, what's up? Did like, that be used to room or? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know? And like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> just a feeling up. <laughs> I was like intimidated by like the the business aspect of it because like I I wanted to be super uh, professional. Don't be, man. Don't be. And until we met, yeah. and I'm like, yo, this guy is the dopest guy ever. I was yeah, I was like inspired. Up. And like, we met up in the first building, um, in the original building. By the way, this this new space. This is part. This is part of a Beta Collective Part Two. Mm. It's fresh, fresh, yeah, um, new office. Super dope. Um, more office space. More lighting. More. Feels so feels so open and the acoustics are really yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, that was nice nice but um yeah this is Beta Collective two um Jason recently just expanded Beta Collective uh, super dope congratulations again um, but yeah uh, go, going back to how we first met though uh, he gave us like a tour um, uh, originally we wanted to get a different part of space inside the office which is like upstairs in the original mm-hmm. and then um which was dope. Thank, thanks for showing us that. Uh, 
we, we got there, we were like getting feelers and whatnot, and then it, we noticed that like, oh, is this is a little bit too much sound but like going on. We, we didn't want to disturb like um, the rest of your, or the rest of our coworkers basically, yeah, all good. right? And, um, and then you showed us the room downstairs, the conference room, and that's where we originally shoot every single episode. So Jason hooked us up. Um, he's, he's, we've been rolling there ever since, and again, we can't thank you enough for letting us shoot the G-Town podcast sure. in, in the offices, man. It's it's My been a, it's been a real real pleasure uh, shoot, shooting these episodes. Um, yeah, man, like five months already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> been been super sick. But um, I'm gonna start off with our first segment. Uh, so we are, we have we implemented these three new segments. Um, basically, the three ones that we want to be revolving around is uh, breaking ice with my wrist, which is basically some icebreakers. Uh, G Town Tales is where we tell our stories. Um, usually, that revolves around our special guest. And uh, lastly, off the dome. And our final question, as always, if you watch every episode, you should know what it already is. So, icebreakers. How's everyone's week or day been so far? Starting with Jason. Uh, it's okay. I would say it was going, it kind of led over from last week, but uh, mm -hmm. I think I was mentioning to you guys off the air uh, previously, it was a bit of a hairy time because this space, um, I don't know if your audience knew, but I just opened it up uh, about seven weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I went through about five months of renovation, so basically this is about a 4,000 square feet of new space, um, which is an extension from our old space. Um, we were at capacity at the old place, so obviously doubling our capacity from four thousand to eight thousand square feet. Um, you know, you, you start from, from from time to time, especially when you're running the business yourself. You're kind of second guessing, like, hey, you know, what am I doing here? You know, yeah. Hmm. Am I am I am I in the weeds now? Am I in some shit? So sorry. How's, oh no no worries. You can swear. That's actually very interesting. That's a very interesting yeah. thing because I'm a business student myself. Yeah. And we go through paper analysis often, sure. very often, like yeah. Harvard business cases. For right? sure. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of a lot of issues arise when people don't really understand when they can increase capacity yeah. or decrease capacity, you know? Yeah. And it's just like versus your experience um, compared to like a Harvard business study, it's like it's so much more different because right. then they don't talk about emotion or they don't talk about the and there's only the so much you can only read about right that like was, you have mm -hmm. to feel it you have to be exactly. in it and uh so it's just and then obviously you have your personal life apart from that too of course. and then as a business owner more often than not they blend together or they overlap all the time right mm -hmm. so right. as much as you want to practice you know time management or work-life balance it's it's hard man you, you, you get that so uh, so the past week, kind of to answer your question, was you know a little bit more challenging than than most, and then um, just did a gut check just yesterday because <laughs> it was all, I was like yeah maybe I should crunch some numbers just yeah. to actually see how I'm doing here with uh, opening this <laughs> space and uh, you know to my pleasant surprise it's actually it wasn't it's not as bad as it was good so I think today was probably you guys hit me up on a really good day because <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I went to yoga last night and yeah, after I crunched numbers I'm like cool man I'm I'm ready to go for this so yeah no it, it, it's good it, it, it took a bit but I think. I mean, I think for myself, it's it's always in flux anyways. There's never sort of like a continuum yeah. where it's like, oh yeah, I'm on a constant high, right? Oh, so yeah. I think, I mean, if you believe in yin and yang, I mean, without the yin, there's no yang, right? Exactly. So yeah, exactly. um, so then, you know, when you're, when you're kind of having your down week or whatever, coming up, it's, it's good. It's a good feeling to have. And then, you know, you're just being mindful and, and, and thankful that, that that's yeah. happening to you. That's so, great to hear, yeah. man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I don't know about you guys, how you're, how the rest of your day <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, I had a pretty good weekend. Yeah? Yeah, I went to... Trying to think what we did. Did a lot of stuff. I went downtown oh, with yeah. Brendan. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, yeah you had yeah, a sick weekend. Brendan man. hit me up at like 7 a.m. type of thing. <laughs> I was like, yo, let's go downtown 7 a.m. Like, you actually went to 7 a.m.? We did. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it, like I've never done that though. You know, yeah. we always go at like noon or, yeah. like or afternoon, afternoon. Yeah. when the streets <laughs> are packed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. Like, I'm just like hanging out with Brendan, third wheeling with yeah. Nina. <laughs> <laughs> we, we hit up, so he drops off Nina. We hit up Costco and just like we're just yeah. hanging out. Yeah, it, it, it feels so good because like I feel like we got so much done. Of course, it's like it's like only eleven o'clock. Yeah, you know? we, like we grabbed a coffee, we just like just hung out like. Those are the times that I remember, like me, just me and my bro, just like yeah, shade, just relaxing, just relaxing, yeah, just yeah. relaxing. It was a memorable day. 
Mm-hmm. Something so simple, you know, just starting yeah. your day off early. Yeah, yeah, does exactly. so much damage. Exactly. Yeah. How about you? How was your weekend? It was alright, man. I didn't do much. Yeah. I just kicked it to like White Rock and Crescent mm-hmm. Beach and just drank there and May Long, right? So. Is that bridge nice. still gone? Like, yeah, it's yeah. gone. Rock's still yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. It's still gone. But it's I heard they got good. like money or they found uh, a builder or they put out a bid for it too. Yeah, I, I'm mm-hmm. sure they'll get that money. It's 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 it brings yeah, yeah. in a lot of tourism anyway. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, sorry, a bid for the White Rock. Yeah, the pier. Yeah, yeah, to see who's gonna build happens. it, right? Yeah. So they'll put it up, put a contract yeah. out there, yeah. and then so whoever's the lowest. Yeah, so City of White Rock yeah. will say, okay, I like your proposal better, yeah. or because maybe yeah. you know the way you've costed it out, yeah. or your timeline. Yeah. So exactly. yeah, it's, it's it's called RFPs. So oh, okay. request for proposals. Yeah, I see. Yeah, every it's, it's a, a big business thing, pretty that, standard yeah. thing. Yeah. Session, if you could um, to to our to our viewers out there, um, I want I want them to know what the what the White Rock Pier is and what it was. It, what, what it is now and what it was. Ooh, if right, if you right. could, if you all could, right. just keep talking for now. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> no worries. yeah, it's been it's been a busy week for me. Um, I got sick again. Oh, man, I'm such such a week. Vitamin C, bro. I know, I'm man. You, I know. I've been mm. taking some vitamin pills. Um, last week's episode, I had my cousin um, Cassandra on board, and she told me just take vitamin pills, man. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I, I don't take enough vitamins or right, whatever, whatever the heck. Um, but yeah, it's been a rough week. I've been like just coughing, coughing, yeah. coughing. I think it's just the season, man. I, I don't know. The allergies even too. It's called hay fever. Yeah. You get like you get like sickness symptoms, like, but it's actually just allergies. Yeah, a lot of pollen in the air. It's just yeah. like stuff you know. Uh, are you vaccinated? I am. <laughs> I, I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we got we got anti vaxxers in the house. Man, that is that is such a horrible thing right now. Yeah, we'll, I, we'll, I want to get. We'll, we'll get. Yeah. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. I am vaccinated though. Okay, <laughs> but, okay, that's good. But, but shit. Um, yeah, it's been a busy weekend. Um, I went to downtown with Aaron. Such, such a beautiful thing. You, you never realize like how beautiful downtown is without all the people on the streets. And Straight up, right? bro. So, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah, it's so nice, man. Uh, you know what's like so funny? Like um, when we were there, we, like we've we've all I'm pretty sure we've all been to downtown enough times, like like yeah. um, since we live here, right? But isn't it just amazing how how, how tourists see the steam clock at oh, yeah. Gastown? Yeah, yeah, these man. motherfuckers love that yeah. shit, man! Yeah, Holy love. cow, yeah. goes off every hour, and they're like, oh, then she like, yeah. oh, dude. <laughs> 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 yeah, I used to be a, I used to be a valet in downtown. Oh yeah, I was at a hotel. So, like to your point about those early morning things, because yeah, we used to. I mean, it would be a seven a.m. shift, so mm-hmm. I would get there like six. Well, sometimes it's like seven six fifty nine. I'll get there mm-hmm. to yeah. my shift, right? But seven other times you can actually go and grab a coffee or whatever, and like okay, that's kind of cool. But yeah, when it's like super quiet, it's kind of like eerie mm-hmm. how it is, especially with the sunshine <coughs> and stuff like that, and then. Uh, but yeah, man, tourists coming down from, you know, they go and grab their breakfast, and then the first thing they go, like, hey, where should I go visit, right? Sure, yeah. and then you get your hit list, right? It's the usual thing, you know, Chinatown, Stanley Park, mm-hmm. Steam Clock. But mm-hmm. honestly, in my mind, it's like, why am I even recommending <laughs> I wouldn't even go here, like, yeah. Yeah. brutal, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you got to do it because that's what they ask for. It's like, yeah. where can I find a Steam Clock? I'm like, for the 40th time today, yes. That's, cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's right. <laughs> and then they come back like, yeah, it looks nice. I'm like... It they all it. they all have that bittersweet yeah, thing yeah, too because it's yeah. just like oh that's it because right? that really is you yeah, go with them like and then the steam doesn't even power the clock the steam is just electric. steam <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it doesn't even power the clock like, yeah. it's you're fuel gypped too you know what's on that but whatever it's phony <laughs> it's not a steam clock yeah. so don't funny. get it twisted <laughs> um, but we we were there um, we were me and Aaron were just waiting for my girlfriend to finish 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 up with their meetings and whatnot so like we were like. Yo, um, make like five videos that you can make at the Steam Clock, right? And they're all prank videos. Right. Like, like one of them being like, oh, um, run up to one of those guys and then just like, oh, in- interrupt their picture oh, and then yeah, like record yeah. their reaction. And oh, <laughs> like holy, oh, that's fuck. me. That, that is me, hour, right? They all waited another hour. Now but that will get that views. <laughs> that's gonna get views. <laughs> that's that's so funny. That's me. That's me. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, moving on to the next question. This is going to be like a real funny one. But, um, uh, oh, um, Unbearable Media, thanks thanks for tuning in. Oh, <laughs> we'll answer some of his questions later on. But, but th- thanks for tuning in. Hey, though. I got that's, two, so it's all good. <laughs> that's <laughs> dope. <laughs> um, if you... Stop hanging up together. All right, cool, bro. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, 
if you could be a, a transformer, but you can only turn into a car, um, what? What? What car would you be? Only a, oh Man, no, oh, but that's bullshit. Geez. If you can turn into a plane, everyone's gonna say you can turn into a yeah, plane. Yeah, I'm gonna you know go Starscream. No, nah, fuck that. <laughs> but if you can be a transformer, if everyone knows what transformers are, All right. um, what car would you transform into? Man. It could be you could be a motorcycle too. Wow. Mm. Uh, I'd be a motorcycle. Be a motorcycle. You'd be like a small transformer though. You'd be like <laughs> you'd be like a human sized like transformer, bro. <laughs> and after that, like a pocket bike. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want to be like a, some truck, some semi truck. Yeah, like Optimus Prime, yeah. big ass. Like, a semi truck, uh, yeah. dude. You're stuck in traffic, dude. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just walk over it. Anyone though? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Motorcycle? Yeah, probably motorcycle. Motorcycle. Yeah. Jason. Um, I think I gotta go with uh, the first car I've always wanted out of high school was a uh, Toyota Supra. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. That was a yeah. Uh, yeah. The Mark IV? Uh, that would be. Oh, okay. okay. Nice. Did you check out the all new right. ones? The new one looks pretty yeah. sick. So. Yeah. But a lot of people hate it, though. Yeah, because they're all it's all BMW branded. Yeah. That's why. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm so far yeah. removed from that now. For but sure. yeah, but that was something that was like, I had a poster of it or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Like, That's a good that car. Was, that was back in the day. Cool. And even like the resale value now, if yeah. people ship it over from yeah. Japan and stuff yeah. like that, it's actually yeah. still worth because quite a bit. Because the motors are so good. Yeah, so. Yeah, you could tune it like, yeah. Like insane, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tune it insanely. Yeah. Uh, I would pick. See, now that you mentioned Supra, yeah, I'll probably go R thirty four. Oh come on, man! Come on, come on. Go Skyline. Go Skyline. Go Skyline. All right, all right. There you go. No, no hating, no hating. Oh man, I asked this question. I really don't know much about cars. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh man, I'd, I'd be a Lambo. That's sick. Yeah? Oh Lambo. That's what you say. Yeah. Come on, come on, yeah. come on. Asim Madani. Or Bugatti. Um, yeah, yeah. Richard's already gonna say. No, I was gonna, gonna say, say. I was gonna <laughs> say. I was gonna say a truck of any sort, because that wouldn't be like a big transformer, you know. Yeah, like Optimus, huh? No, no, no. I'm trying to be like, no, 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 be like Bumblebee size, you know. A truck? No, Bumblebee is. Uh, <laughs> Bumblebee's uh, Volkswagen Bumblebee Beetle. Is, uh, yeah. Chevy. Volkswagen. Oh. Bumblebee is a Volkswagen Beetle. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, I thought you, I thought you said truck. That's why. What would you be a Honda Fit? No, bro. Be like a Mini Cooper. Mini Cooper. What'd you be? Probably like a F one fifty. F one fifty. Yeah, like what a semi truck. Oh, okay. Oh, not a semi truck. A pickup truck. Pickup truck. truck. Yeah, yeah, like Sick. a midsize. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I thought you meant Optimus truck. No, that's a semi truck, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, all right. yeah I didn't want to make this question a little too easy because, like, yo, would you be a? <laughs> yeah, like, sure. Yeah. Like, everyone just be like, yo, fucking, uh, fucking the jet. <laughs> you know what I mean? like that motorcycle. <laughs> I like the super one. So. <laughs> It'd be a sm- like a human size, like straight up human size transformer, bro. The motorcycle. <laughs> Such a funny. Th- okay. Um, I, I, I ripped this question from somewhere, but uh, I forgot where I got it from. But if you can make a movie, but it has to be shitty, but if it does good at the box office, you die. What? Yeah. So if you made, if you had like a limited budget to make a movie, but it has to be bad, but if it does good, you will die. What would it be about? Wow. What? Yeah. What would it be about? You have to make it to make it bad. That's a lot to, that's a lot to unravel there. I know. Um, like you have to try to make it bad yeah it has to be bad like no one's gonna watch this shit Dude, you know what I mean so whatever I make man <laughs> <laughs> okay I could start it off <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like something like it's controversial but yeah. I was reading something about like the media and like how like they're like it's like very racist so like Hollywood they, uh-huh. like, they, they always need like a white person and a black person mm-hmm. to like star in their movie mm-hmm. right like anything that would like win sell would probably like anything that starts with like Asian people man like like an Asian family sitcom of some sort so like like a comedic like oh, like okay. Asian family sitcom I don't mm-hmm. think that would sell no, don't no, hire Ken Jeong. It, it but like fresh off the boat though, that one's but, killing. Yeah, it. fresh yeah, off. It's the killing boat. it, but yeah, it's yeah. like compared to like every other. Sure. Major, yeah, yeah, you know sure. What yeah. I mean? You can't have yeah, every. You can't okay, have like exactly. six different fresh off the boats. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay. We're like compared to like Modern Family or like whatever. It's yeah. all like white based, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fuck. If I if I can make a movie and I have to do bad, probably fucking like a Mortal Kombat remake. If, if you guys know what Mortal Kombat is, like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, oh, like, yeah. Mortal Kombat, like, if... Oh, no, 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 sorry. Like, any, any video game, any any video movie 
video game movie remake usually yeah. bad. is usually fucking horrible. Terrible. Yeah, if I had to pick one, Crash Bandicoot. Live action. Uh, no one would fucking watch Live that. action. Yeah, dude, I'd actually watch that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dude, no way, yeah. bro. Or was all, well, everything that happened with, like, Sonic the Hedgehog, right? They're trying yeah, to do a yeah. Oh, yeah, my yeah, God. They bastardized what he looks yeah. like and stuff. Terrible. Oh, terrible. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. Yeah. Have you guys seen that, though? Have you guys seen it? The I saw the picture. Of, I saw mm. I, I saw the image of what they wanted the new uh, Sonic, Sonic to look, look like. Like, and, like, and like the one from better. the video game, right? Yeah. yeah. But it was, oh, yeah, it was so far from Yeah, that was... I saw a photo. They compared that that previous one, the original one, next to the kid from Jumanji. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you so saw he turned into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks just like it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see Literally that. the I didn't same see person. That. Yeah. You can probably pull it up on the screen too. <laughs> it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, my right. computer, man. It's like. So that's, if yeah. you could make it, it has to be a shit movie. Man. Probably like. Honestly, oh, this is gonna be. Mm. Oh, this is gonna be some dark. Some dark stuff, right? right. It's, it's gonna Dude, have people to gonna be. Yeah, but people are gonna watch it. No one's gonna watch it. No one's gonna like that shit, though. No, no one's gonna watch this. You guys know what snuff films are? Yeah. No one watches that. What's no one's gonna watch that. Describe what a snuff film. That's what I would make. It's is. it's it's really dark. It's um. Man, I don't even want to talk about it. it gives me chills. Say. It's people who make movies that are sadistic. Yeah. And it's oh. real. It's not acting anymore. It's oh. real. Like they actually film people getting hurt. Yeah. Or even worse. Or like worse. Actually killing somebody. Yeah. I guess oh. I've seen that before. Oh. Yeah. It's actually oh. a film. Yeah. There's, they some, make dark, an hour yeah, there's long, some stuff hour on the dark hour. web you can download, but it's like it's like basically someone filming someone like killing someone. Yeah. There's oh. stuff like that. That's crazy. It's bro. pretty morbid. There's some pretty morbid stuff oh there. So Don't look like, it up. There's torture it's stuff. Yeah, there's like cannibalism and stuff too. Yeah, it's cannibalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's some that's people like that, you know, like the victim or whatever. Some yeah. of them are actually voluntarily wanting to be a part of that. Yeah. Right? Like they actually like, you know, cut like, this off me yeah. or whatever. Right? Like they have stuff like that. It's pretty. Kill me, bro. Yeah. I, I've seen stuff like that. It's. Ugh. No, don't, don't look cool. it up. You yeah, know. Don't. It's nasty. It's, it's weird. Is, like, it gonna watch... make, is it going to make money? I don't know. What, what if you're about to make money, bro? A hundred million dollar budget to make a stuff, a stuff movie, bro. No, so no, many people God. dead, bro. Yeah. 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 No ideas here, bro. Sesson breaks his budget. Sesson dies. This will sell. I think you're onto something, man. Good idea. Oh man! Paramount Dude. sponsors me. Yeah, yeah. Paramount. Yeah, Paramount. Oh, oh my help you out. Paramount in this boardroom. Like, yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. One. I like that one. Someone, someone's at the boardroom table, yeah. and someone pitches a sick ass movie. Yeah. Like, yo, man, all this like fancy, all this stuff. Yeah. Sesson Colt comes up with yo. the snuff film. Yeah. Snuff like, film. Oh, <laughs> this, <Yeah>. this guy. <laughs> guy. <laughs> this guy. Uh, don't you work for government or something? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be careful what you here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That, that, also, is that like kind of like Jackass? Not really. No, no not really. No, it's no, like no, a because no. Jackass like they love it, you know, like, <laughs> and it's funny. Yeah. No, but no one's like dying, bro. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's not Jackass. sadistic. Yeah, 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 I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't comedic. consider it sadistic. Yeah. It's oh, so it's like true sadism. It's, it's all jokes. Yeah. yeah. This is this is some. Yeah, shit. They, they, they got some. They got something wrong. They they, they think that this is cool. Oh, oh geez. Geez. It's pretty, <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty messed up. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Anyways, well, we better, shit, better things. <laughs> Jason. Um, I don't know. Just as you guys were talking, I think um, I would always try to think. What are some like really cheesy like Chinese movies that I grew up on <laughs> oh, yeah, back in the, the day? Dramas? And it's just like, man, how do you translate that into like you know if uh, it was like a Hollywood movie and it just yeah, for another company? It just wouldn't bro. fly, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's why I was so surprised when Kung Fu Hustle. I don't know if you guys remember Kung Fu yeah, Hustle. Yeah. Um, that translated and became like a huge hit. I was like, that's yeah, as a crap movie, so unreal. Like the the, the CG in it was yeah. just yeah. terrible, but it did for work. some reason it just got it got it got big, it got viral, and got a lot of fans. So yeah, so there's this one series, it might be before your time, but um, <coughs> it was all about like triads of like the late nineties, early two thousands. So it's called Young and Dangerous. Oh, I like that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Young and Dangerous was like a series. I think they had like six or seven movies of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Back in our day when I was like, you know, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, it was like, oh, we felt like like, wow, we want to yeah. be like these yeah, kids. Yeah. Right? So so that that but I'm like, 
man, if you want to translate that into something in Hollywood, it would be so bad because oh, it's yeah, just yeah, so yeah. cheesy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like they're singing karaoke while they're like talking, yeah. like, <laughs> you know, how to do deals and stuff. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. nah. it's just a bunch of Asian kids now. Yeah, like, oh. right? So, and then of course, it's always like a hundred and one like yeah. big ass rumble on the yeah. street. Like, mm. no, nah, come on now. Yeah, <laughs> uh-huh. But yeah, but hey, if, it, if it's a hit, cool, you know? Because no, uh, then you die, bro. Yeah. If it's a hit. But you know what? I you die, die happy. for a good reason. I die happy yeah. because I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh because, it around, because the thing it is, yeah, because the thing is that series was like, that was like kind of like the heart of our generation. Yeah. Like, at least us, all, all, all us Asian friends when we were growing yeah. up, yeah. right? And, you know, some friends were gangbangers or whatever, right? But we were all in kind of in that circle. And then literally we worshiped that series because that yeah. was like, oh, that's so, no, I wouldn't say it's reflective of me, but it was like kind of, they in the movie they're talking our language the way we spoke mm-hmm. you know the way we didn't listen to authority the way we wanted to you know fuck around at metro town and station square and all the Shit. scraps we used to get into like it, 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 it had a lot of those different elements so mm-hmm. so that's something that's like it would definitely be like very nostalgic for me mm-hmm. but i'm like man because i was like i'm just trying to think like if <coughs> dicaprio was in it or something like, yeah. that'd be so cheesy <laughs> you can't even make it hardcore there's just no way that's yeah. true actually yeah. <clears throat> Aaron, I got the shittiest movie, okay? Oh, right. there it is. Pitch that. Okay. Pitch that. Pitch that. Pitch that. Yeah, he's ready. So, Paramount's listening. Yeah. So, it's $100 million. So Fast and Furious 8, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but they're on bicycles. <laughs> oh, shoot. And then they tune their own bicycles. The oh, like, you get no chains, bro? Like, shit. Throwing <laughs> Zach and Fran. Oh, <laughs> that's a shit movie right there. <laughs> I can picture the montage. That, that's actually terrible. That's a shit movie. That's actually that's terrible. Based in Iceland. Yeah. Based in Iceland. <laughs> of all places. And it's all that's serious. It. It's that's all it. serious. That's Dude, that's the $100 million movie right there. Yeah, that's oh it. Oh my god. <laughs> that's Breaking bombed. box office records. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Nice. Nice. And, and there's like teasers. It's like it beats Endgame. Like, whoa! No, no, <laughs> oh my god! No. Fast and Furious. No spoilers. I haven't seen it yet. So oh, you haven't seen it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I need all to right. watch that. Yeah. Man, Jade, it's been it's been two weeks, man. It's like I three know, weeks man. now. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, all right. <laughs> He's a busy man. I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it uh, soon. Oh no, it's not Tuesday today. Darn. Uh, no no cheap nights. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, that's sick though. I didn't know. Like it was. It's, Richard told me this actually. Yeah, you can go before twelve. Go before twelve. That's 50%. Every day. It's not fifty percent off, but it's yeah, the same matinee, 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 matinee is usually usually cheaper. cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. That's every day too. Yeah, yeah, it's every day, every morning. But how long is it? Is it a two and a half hour or a two hour movie? It's three hours. Three hours. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I can burn three hours at like eleven <laughs> a.m. was like right in the middle. Of the day. Yeah. yeah, it's a little tough. Um, <clears throat> now this one. A little bit on the racial side, but um, if you could, if you could be any different ethnicity, what would you be? I'm not gonna ask why, just just what it is. I we can start white. with white. White. Yeah, I'd be white too. You white? I'd white. be white. Yeah. 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 No question. No question. No question. All right. For me. Yeah. Not gonna lie. I, I wish I'd be Vietnamese. Yeah, just like so close though, you know. It's like, yeah, yeah. We're so close though. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. It's just, or not. I'll give a reason why. But sure. I don't know. It's because I've been, I, I've, I've grown up around you guys. Yeah. For like for so long, so it's like, basically like, low key like my other half kind of thing. So if, if I if I could be like that, yeah, I'd be you guys. There it is, man. You guys make great food. Are you, are you the only flip in your crew? I, well, no, it's like no, no. It's, it's like half, half. It's half, half. Yeah, yeah, it's half. Yeah, it's actually half and half. Yeah, it pretty is. much. Yeah. Is it? No, it's not. It's not. No, it's not. It's it's like it's close to half. half. <laughs> it's it's, 60, it's like one body. So 60, 40, 60, 40. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think. I didn't think. I'd count. It's 60, 40. <laughs> okay. All right. So I don't know what it'd be. You don't know. I don't know. The view white. White is right, man. White is right. White is right. White is right for sure. <laughs> I don't know. White privilege is real, man. Assassin? Be white. I don't know. I'd probably stay Filipino. <laughs> stay Filipino. Yeah, stay Filipino. Stay Filipino. Stay Filipino. Well, stay Filipino. Well, no, man, you, you have, have to, bro. Oh, yeah, I gotta pick. I gotta yeah. pick. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna be white then. Yeah, but <laughs> what? White, bro. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. What type of white, bro? You're right. Yeah, like half German, like quarter Irish. Probably be American. No, oh yeah, that's yeah. The, the, the true, true American the true white, white right here. The true white. I don't mind being British white. 
British white? I'll be British white. Okay. Mm. And yeah. For one, I would say, you know, obviously being married with kids now, totally different story. But back in the day, I had yeah. a buddy, uh, shouts to Adam. Um, I was working together with him. We were, we were at a company, and uh, man, we would. And he's from Liverpool. Sick. And, but he came here. Uh, well, he he met a girl from Vancouver uh, mm -hmm. when she was like backpacking or traveling to London, right? So he hooked up, and they're like, yeah, you know, I want to come spend some time here in in in, in Vancouver in Canada. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, we got into the same job. And long story short, we went out a bunch of times hitting bars and stuff like that. And just I don't know if you guys ever watched Love Actually. Yeah. Where uh, the guy would go to the U.S., he'd come to the U.S. and like start talking to women at the bars, yeah. and they're just like, "Okay, say bottle again," and he'd be like, "Bottle." <laughs> and he had the accent. The girls are like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> so the guy like literally had women like eating out of the palm of his hand with any words that came out of his mouth, right? Because it was like the proper like Queen's English, you know? Yeah. And I was like, "Damn, like that's pretty slick." And he, and it's not even no swag, nothing. He's just being a normal dude, and, yeah. and being you know, himself. yeah, being himself. But just, I think, just having that language and the, the accent was like, man, it's a dropper. He was a lady killer, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was pretty, it was pretty cool. So in that sense, that's where I thought I was like, yeah, well, what would be nice to kind of be a white guy, <laughs> oh my god, British, British accent, accent. yeah, yeah go, just go, being in go. North America. So, yeah. dude, yeah. that's it. Man. Already had an advantage right there. Yeah. yeah. Dude, so, I, 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 I have been half white, yo. Actually, if you, and if you talk to a lot of people that um that backpack from Australia and London and, and the UK, mm -hmm. yeah, they 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 love coming to North America, especially the dudes. I don't know, obviously for the women, I don't know, but like for the dudes that come here, like that's one one of the things that they're like, well, we're, we're like a we're like kings here. Like when yeah, we're talking about like women, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. no problem, right? Mm -hmm. When they're back at home, it's like everyone's the same. Everyone's the same. So yeah. it's like I can't do a shit right yeah, so you when think it's in reverse though if like an american comes to, to, I don't to know. britain that's a, that's a good question i don't know like i've, I've traveled right. out there i spent some time out in the yeah. uk and i don't know maybe i had no game back in the day so <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell i can't tell <laughs> so to answer that question probably not but you know yeah. maybe there's some dudes that you know do from canada but yeah oh, okay <clears throat> all right um great for a great first icebreakers that, that was hilarious <laughs> Funny. Um, we're moving on to next segment. It's called the G Town Tales. Uh, this is where we touch up on origin stories from our special guests and or stories that we want to tell um, that, that that recently happened. So, uh, Jason, to the audience that do not know you, please introduce yourself to them. Sure. Um, Jason Wong. Uh, born and bred in Canada, so I was born in Toronto. Wow. Uh, You're born in Toronto? Born in T.O., yeah. Mm. No impressions, though. Still love to the Raptors, but no, not a Maple Leafs fan. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, my dad and my parents, so my dad was um, from Hong Kong. My mom was born in Vancouver. Wow. Ah. Uh, they met here in Vancouver, and then um, they decided to open up a restaurant out in, uh, in Toronto because we had some family there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was so they got married in '76, had me in 1980. So I was born in uh, yeah Toronto, but then my dad found um, work with Telus, which is called BC Tel back in the day. Mm -hmm. So my dad um, moved us to Vancouver when I was really really young. So I have no impressions of Toronto whatsoever. I, I visited Toronto maybe a handful of times, maybe like three four times uh, since then. So. Um, do you yeah. still have family there? I do, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I uh, still got family there. Um, but yeah, you know, Vancouver is my home. Been here for, man, dating myself now, but 30, yeah, I'll be 39 this year. So oh. wow. that's cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> OG, man. Wow. Um, so, you know, grew up, uh, actually, in fact, I grew, we, uh, yeah, spent some years in Vancouver because we have family here. And then my dad decided to move us to the Burbs just because mm -hmm. of from affordability standpoint. So mm -hmm. uh, we ended up moving to Surrey first, hey. mm -hmm. and then uh, and then from Surrey up until well grade four, then we moved to North Delta. So from there, that was pretty still much still Surrey, still so pretty much it. And then that's where I spent the rest of my childhood, high school years. So I graduated from North Delta Senior Secondary. Shouts to the Huskies. And <laughs> and Shouts to the Huskies. Um, I don't. I don't know how they're doing in sports now. We had a pretty solid football team back in the day, but ever since then, it kind of just sh shot the bed. You we guys have know. a field. Yeah. You do, right? We do. I think so. Yeah. Well, back in the day, um, the way North Delta was set up is you went to junior high, mm -hmm. so that's from grade eight to ten, 
and then you funneled everybody to ND. So ND was <coughs> NDSS, mm -hmm. North Delta Senior Secondary School. Mm -hmm. So that's only grade 11s and 12s. Mm -hmm. So every year, wow. North Delta is the, at that time was the largest graduation class in all of BC. We that's had like crazy. over a thousand grads. A thousand? Almost over a thousand grads. Cause there's 2000, there was like, you, your enrollment is almost 2000 kids from like four different high schools. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, four, so they all, they all kind of converged into that one high school, right? So. It's a fucking party. Right? And yeah. It's like everyone's like the same age and shit. You don't have to do it. Like well, the thing kids. is, when you when you look at the yearbook, I'm I'm looking back at my yearbooks. I'm like, I don't fucking recognize any of these people. Like, there's so many people I had class with. I'm like, really? So, funny story though is uh, last September was our 20 year anniversary. Hey. <laughs> I decided to go to it because I had a few buddies that I kept in touch over the years, and uh -huh. then he's like, Yo, what are you doing? I'm like. I don't know, like I, I, I caught because everyone's on the Facebook thing, so yeah. I heard about it, but I'm like, I had no intentions. But then one thing led to another, and then six of us got together, we're like, hey, we haven't seen each other in like years. Some, like, even, literally, like, like, some, like, yeah, some literally like 20, like literally right after grabbing my certificate yeah, like, was the last time I saw never you guys. Again. Never again, yeah. you know, so, That's uh, so that was pretty trippy. And then, um, but yeah, so that was um, growing up in North Delta, so I graduated in 98. 98 was uh, was my grad year. Dang, that's a weird. That's a year after we were born. So we're one years old. Yeah, you guys are babies, <laughs> man. You guys are babies. Um, so I think from school wise, went to Kwantlen, so KPU. KP. At that time, it was just Kwantlen College, so that's on 72nd Avenue. And I went there for about a year and a half in business, uh, and then I decided to transfer to SFU. Uh, SFU, I got into economics, I think. And then I shit the bed. So I was actually on academic probation like after a first semester. My GPA dropped down after two semesters, dropped down to like 1.9 something. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, great yeah they sent my mom a letter and everything. Yeah. I was like, oh <coughs> shit. Like literally, they gave me one more semester and then they would have booted me out of SFU. Yeah. And I think part of the reason was like, um, I think. I just couldn't handle the course load. I was I was doing four. I think my first semester was five courses. Yeah. And I just couldn't handle it, so I dropped it down to three after yeah <laughs> after almost burning out. So, uh, so I kind of slowly kind of made my way back up, and uh, yeah, four year degree took me five and a half years. That's a normal now. Yeah. 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 So, but at, back and back at that time, it was like. Yeah, you should be done by yeah. by twenty two. You should be out of here and yeah, yeah. trying to look for work and stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so but I ended up switching from so economics got a little bit too hard for me, so I switched out. I ended up being in communications. So I school see. of communications where I graduated, got my art, um, I guess yeah, degree in art, art, art degree in communication. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then from there. Work-wise, I, uh, I was mentioning I was a valet. Uh, I was kind of like my first job, you know, driving cars. Mm -hmm. So Pretty good first job. That was a pretty <laughs> sweet gig. I, yeah. I, I, I can't, you know, no complaints there. Tips were cool, yeah. you know. So mm -hmm. I think at that time, I peaked out at about like, I don't know, 40 bucks an hour or something mm -hmm. like that, just on tips. I was mm -hmm. making eight bucks an hour. Yeah. And, um, but then just on tips alone worked out. You'd go home and they'd be like, you know, couple stacks in your pocket I'm like that's not that's a good that's night. not bad yeah <laughs> you know so uh and then you just got to drive the cars and that was kind of cool what hotel was that if you don't the me metropolitan asking. hey wow. metropolitan on howe street so nice. right across from the pacific center mall yeah mm -hmm. still there mm -hmm. um but then i was actually part of a valet company so um they contracted out to all the different ah. ones so i went to, i i parked at i parked cars at weston bayshore the Crown Plaza, which is now that corner, the Hotel Georgia mm -hmm. one now. So yeah. that was there, and then but Metropolitan was where I was primarily stationed. So, and at that time, because it was a boutique hotel, it had a lot of high rollers and yeah, celebrities, definitely. a lot of celebrities. That's so right. mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that was, that was pretty neat. That was a good. That was a pretty good um, experience. And then after valeting for about three years, then uh, found a job at eBay. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, nice. eBay used to have a like a customer service center here mm -hmm. in Burnaby, and that's where that's the same year that or same year that PayPal started too. So then they had PayPal uh, kind of combined with eBay in Burnaby there, and that's how I met my wife. We're in the same kind of department. Wow, nice. so, lovely. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was cool. Yeah, and then after that, I was like, fuck CSR stuff, man. Customer service reps jobs were horrendous mm -hmm. shitty hours um you know we were annoying customers yeah on the phone or we were doing the live chat and stuff it was just 
terrible and it's just shitty shifts right because mm-hmm. like me and my wife on a girlfriend then like we were like getting off work at like midnight one oh, wow. our weekends were like tuesday wednesdays or whatever uh-huh. it's just super like yeah and <coughs> so while we're asleep in the morning because we got to get up for a night shift or evening shift and get nothing really done you got to go to work at 3 p.m or whatever mm-hmm. so it's just so at, at that point i just like like forget it you know i got this degree what am i going to do with it so mm-hmm. um but what I really was really interested in was, was marketing. So mm-hmm. marketing was kind of my thing because uh, through communications you can take you know various streams of yeah. concentration, right? So advertising and marketing was kind of what I really excelled in. A lot of the courses that I was doing, um, fascinated by it. Like uh, you know I was always like looking at commercials and like trying to like decontextualize it and kind of break it down and you know understand what's sort of the meaning behind the message and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I really liked that, and so I'm like, hey, I gotta find a marketing job. But my mm-hmm. resume was shit, so I just put it out there so I think at that time probably put out about 40 resumes which is by today's standards is like nothing like yeah, yeah. Like hundreds right but yeah, back sure. then we thought man 40 was like man I, I'm a failure so but there was a, a telecommunications company out in Coquitlam called Infosat that I don't know the the, the VP of sales mm-hmm. called me up and he's like want to come in for an interview I was so surprised right because I like literally I was just like they're looking for a marketing coordinator and I really had no nothing except academic yeah. experience right yeah. doing case no studies practice. like case studies exactly. and all that kind of stuff that's all I did was school projects right exactly. that's all I had going for me on my resume so when the guy mm-hmm. called me in and um you know and sorry I'll go back a little bit though I did some traveling that's why it took me five and a half years oh, I um I spent some time in uh the UK and Scotland I actually lived there for a year because I, I met a girl there um, but I spent about a year there and then I traveled kind of around kind of Europe and stuff like that. So Spain, mm-hmm. um, sorry, um, uh, Amsterdam, like Holland and, 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 and France. So, um, why, why the UK? Um, good question. I still, is this, is this for like, it's for the soul, right? You're just like, well, yeah, there was actually another trip that I took about a year before that. Um, you guys may not know it, but there was a trip called, so if you're of Chinese descent, Here's the thing. So if you're of Chinese descent, the Taiwanese government uh, wanted to subsidize families of Chinese descent to come to Taiwanese, uh, to Taiwan for an educational um, sort of reform trip. Okay. And, every, and it could range anywhere from three weeks to three, uh, so to about eight weeks. Uh-huh. Right? I think it was called a Taiwanese economic student something, 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 right? Uh-huh. And literally, it's heavily subsidized. My dad, I think, if I recall, he paid 500 bucks for this three-week trip, uh-huh. and then I just had to pay for my airfare, wow. and then spending money, right? But it was one big frat party. It was just one huge party. Literally, like, um, you traveled up and down with a crew. At that time, we had like five, 400 wow. people, all our age, mm-hmm. from all parts of the world. Yeah. All Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that there was Chinese people in Austria. Uh-huh. Germany, like I yeah. heard about that, but I'm like, like actually like... <laughs> meet people that, that, and that's how I met my buddies uh, from from Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. They're Chinese. I still friends with them to this day, mm-hmm. right? But I met them by chance at this thing, mm-hmm. and that's how I met this girl too. She was from Scotland. She was Chinese, and then we met, and then we kept in touch, and then I ended up visiting her. Uh, her and um, after that, and that's why I spent a year there. Oh, that's cool. But the funny thing is, with this whole tiny Taiwanese trip, the 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 nickname is called Love Boat. It's called the love ah, boat. Right? Okay. So if you honestly, if you Google search love boat, Taiwan love boat, every year there's some epic there's stuff, right? So okay. you're meeting people from the states and, and all nice. that. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, there's even a place down in like the, an island in uh, South Africa called Reunion Island. Yeah, tiniest little island. You can even, you can't even pick it out from the map, right? There's Chinese people living there because I met yeah. uh, I met like four people that came from Reunion Island onto this trip. So this is in Taiwan. In Taiwan, yeah. yeah, there's Chinese people everywhere now. Though. There is, yeah. right? We're like we're a disease, man. We're like yeah. we're a virus. We're all <laughs> over the map, right? Two so billion, two billion. Yeah, people. we're we're at every corner of the earth. But like that was probably the trip of a lifetime. Like it's still memories yeah. are still fresh in my mind. Like all the things that we did, we went up and down Taiwan from the very very north to the very very south. How old were you at the time? I was 19. Wow, yeah, young, yeah. 19, 20. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, um, but yeah, it was it was crazy. That's like if, if the if parents only knew mm-hmm. kind of all the <laughs> shit that went on with it with, with this trip, they probably wouldn't even send us on this because we didn't learn shit. Like yes, yeah. we're all stuck in this like 
like dorm, right? Like a yeah. huge dorm, uh-huh. right? And then every morning we're supposed to go to class, right? But like we were like, yeah. drinking, like we had beers in our dorm and everything, right? It was just crazy. Oh, that's so nuts. That's actually so you know, fun. and then and then your class is like two hours or whatever. The rest of the time, they, yeah, they like the government people are encouraging to like go out <coughs> see the sites. So we're hitting the night markets all the time. Yeah, you know, going karaoke every night, cool. clubbing, and we did. Yeah. It was ripped. Like some people like literally had to get parents to send wire them more money because they ran yeah. out of cash. But everything there's cheaper too. It was cheap. Yeah, 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 yeah. but it was cool. legit, man. Like That's it was. Crazy. Yeah. So yeah, so I still I still got some buddies in Calgary that I keep in touch with from time to time. So mm-hmm. if we ever I ever get a chance to Cal- go to Calgary, I'll hit them up and be like, "What's up?" and try to catch up. That's. And there's that's one or two fun. here from Vancouver. Uh-huh. I think uh, we didn't grow too close, but we we kind of keep in touch as well. Uh-huh. In any case, so that kind of led me to meet this one girl. Mm-hmm. So I uh, spent time in the UK. And uh, yeah, so basically coming back, back to this whole job interview when he brought me in, at the end of this whole interview, I was like, I was shitty at it too. I was like, I had nothing prepared. You know how they always say, mm-hmm. you know, these are the list of questions that an employer might ask you mm-hmm. and this and that. I murdered it. Like, I butchered it so bad, right? Mm-hmm. I felt like I have no chance. Then he, comes, then he calls me back like later that night for a second interview the next day. And then um, basically he just in that, within, it was like a 10 minute, a 10 minute conversation. Mm-hmm. And then he brought, brought me back in the next day. And I remember him telling me, he's like, you know why, you know, you know why I decided, I, I've decided to hire you. I'm like, and I kept thinking like, maybe some of the qualifications or whatever the fuck, right? I'm like, but in my, in the sense I had no qualifications. Basically I gave him a two page resume, right? So he's like, okay. If you only gave me the first page, I just tell you to fuck off, right? It's because on your second page, you listed off all your travel experience mm-hmm. that you've traveled the world, mm-hmm. right? That was what excited me. Mm-hmm. That's what interested me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that, I've kept that sort of advice to this very day mm-hmm. to anybody that I know. Now it's obviously easy, right? Everybody likes to travel, right? But mm-hmm. back in the day, like I, Friends are like just like you're hermits, or you just stay like working or grinding, hustling. You just stay at home. You don't do nothing, and you're in this whole echo chamber. And um, so for him to tell me that I've, because I've traveled and become more well-rounded as a person that way, wow. mm-hmm. you know, they, he saw way more value than if I was just simply I did all these case studies at SFU, yeah, or exactly. you know, I did a group project with a team of five or whatever the fuck, right? So, so because of something like that, that really pivoted me and that set the course for where I wanted to kind of go with my mm-hmm. you know career and all that as far as the entrepreneurial side I would say I'm pretty late in the game for it um, I didn't catch that bug until I would say a few years later but um, so yeah that was probably one of the best marketing experiences of my life mm-hmm. that actually allowed me to travel even more um, because this telecommunications company was like all hooked up with like satellite phones and stuff like that mm-hmm. so when you're selling satellite phones to companies, that means you're satellite, selling satellite phones to like, but fuck nowhere, basically. But fuck nowhere, right? Yeah. But like huge oil and gas companies, yeah. mining companies, yeah. like these are all billion dollar companies of that course. need internet, fucking in Mount Everest and yeah, shit. Yeah, right? yeah. So we're selling sat phones to yeah. them. So that allowed me to go to like Houston, um, Calgary, um, all these different like oil and gas like prominent places and doing trade shows and stuff like that. And wow. I'm like, holy shit, like this is like, bigger than what I've like can imagine as far mm-hmm. as like commerce and economics and, and, and business and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So, um, so that was a, probably a job that I probably remember the most. And, um, and then, but then I left that because they decided to shift everything to Calgary. That's where all their business is. So oh, nice. yeah. And then I ended up finding a job with a company called the, um, with an organization called the Burnaby board of trade and similar to the Surrey board of trade here, the yeah. Burnaby board of trade basically is a, uh, a chamber of commerce and an association that connects all entrepreneurs, business owners into one little, mm-hmm. one big membership group, right? Mm-hmm. That's where I caught the bug because I was doing events and membership management at this board of trade. That was my role. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Just by virtue of like being there, my phone book like of contacts and my LinkedIn profile like of contacts mm-hmm. just exploded. And that's where I caught the entrepreneurial bug because I'm like, you're starting what business and you're like successful, you're succeeding at it or, but you're getting so, you're getting so inspired because like there's about, I think at the Burnaby Board of Trade was about a thousand members. <coughs> Fucking cool, man. Like these guys are like, there's big heavy hitters, the little guys. 
Yeah. And it's the little guys. I was like, man, what are you doing, man? Like, you know, like, what do you do? How do you, how do you mm-hmm. do it? And so getting inspired by them was, so I spent about three and a half years with the uh, Burnaby sure, War Trade. Right. That's when I decided to kind of make that leap. I'm like, wow. yeah, like, cause I'm like, man, if you guys can do shit like this, and some were like super sketchy too, right? Like multi-level marketers uh-huh. and yeah. all that, right? <laughs> Um, and I'm like, but you're making a go at it. That I gotta give props to, right? Like, you know yeah, what? I still mad respect for you wanting to yeah. do stuff like that. It's no like grimy work, but it's yeah, working. right. Yeah. And 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 these guys are sticking their necks out too, right? Yeah. Because either they are making money or they're not, but they're trying to hustle at it too, yeah. right? So I think for that, I have to respect that. So I think he, getting inspired by what they're doing was like, okay, you know, what do I want to do now? Do I want to be stuck trying to climb a corporate ladder? You know, mm-hmm. um, be be in that sort of corporate world where you kind of work your way up and maybe if some old dude that I want his job is gonna yeah. you know maybe he croaks and has a jammer and leaves yeah. okay great then I can take his role but what if he stays yeah. you know then where am I like, or what if this guy doesn't like you and he doesn't yeah want you and then you end up moving else. laterally yeah. and like you know maybe to another uh, company but it's the same shit right exactly. so I'm like <coughs> you know not to say not to say the corporate gig is it's wrong. It's not for everybody, yeah. right? Uh, sorry, it, you know, some people are super content with it, right? And I'm like, hey, all the power to you, man. You want your six weeks vacation, you want all your benefits yeah. and all that. Hey, stability, especially if you have kids. Yeah. Man, all, all the power to you. But, you know, I think at that time, it kind of just, I got that itch. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, man, I can't, I can't can't work for the man but in this case it was a lady huh? i can't work for the lady man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nothing against her i was just like oh, i don't know if i could and then um but then we got i um my wife and i we got married in uh 09 yeah so it's our 10 year anniversary wow. oh yeah yeah i was just about to say 2019 yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> 10 so, years. Uh, yeah congratulations so, <laughs> thanks um so 09 got married <laughs> sorry um got married and um yeah about a year and a half my wife got pregnant after that, so <laughs> your baby. Dude, it's all still, yeah, it is. Last time I checked. So, um, so when I decided to bounce, um, I ba- I left the Burnaby Bar Trade right after uh, the Olympics, actually, twenty ten. Mm-hmm. I actually yeah. volunteered for the Olympics. So, wow. Uh, I think it was uh, it was one of those eat, pray, love moments where the Olympics happened. I had three weeks of vacation. I put it all towards the Olympics and just volunteered. So I was at Cyprus, uh, Cyprus Mountain during that whole time doing mm-hmm. the aerial skiing competitions. And just during that three times, you know, during those three weeks where I was like not thinking about work, not thinking about getting up to go to work. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was just hating it more and more. Like the more I was like away from work, I was like, you were you know, to- yeah, <laughs> you start <laughs> thinking stupid shit, right? It's kind of <laughs> yeah. like you're stuck in your house and yeah. you're just like, you know, idle hands, right? Idle hands are like the devil's workshop. So you're just yeah. like, you get itchy. You're like, fuck, what am I doing with my life? So you, you start having that moment. Uh, wow. And, uh, and so, so that really pushed me. And then, um, lo and behold, I, I, I came back. And then I think about a month later, I, I submitted my resignation. I'm out of here. Without any game plan, really. I had no game plan. Uh, I ended up working with a couple buddies that were doing stock promotion. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was whatever. It was just like a paycheck, no mm-hmm. nothing. But I, so I had no game plan, and then we got pregnant. Uh-huh. I was like, fuck. fuck. <laughs> you know, that was like the summer. That was like the summer of yeah, summer of uh-huh. uh, of twenty ten. And then my 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 daughter was born in March twenty eleven. Mm-hmm. So um, that's when I. So when me when a lot of people have that sort of aha moment, I legit had like an oh shit moment. Like, yeah. What the f- fuck am I gonna do right so 2011 I was like literally I was literally like had like my laptop and I was like trying to write out ideas like Mm -hmm. what do I want to do Mm -hmm. right and it was I was scared I had no and then of course pressure from the wife too Mm -hmm. because she's just like Mm because she's so basically you know even to this day you know the extended health benefits is is because of her, you know, yeah, without yeah, her, yeah. I couldn't go dentist this morning. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so having that is like, was huge. Uh, but it, it did, it bought me a bit of time, mm-hmm. but I knew that I was kind of under the gun in terms mm-hmm. of like, Hey, even for myself, I'm like, what do I want to do with my life? Right. Like mm-hmm. career wise, can I see myself getting back into that, you know, applying for job pool again? Like, so, so edgy, so much pressure. Right? Yeah. It's, Fuck. It's crazy. So, um, and then, yeah, literally, I was like, okay, what do I do? And then I'm like, okay, I'm in marketing. Marketing is my thing. Okay, <coughs> let's 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 try put together a business plan for to be a marketing consultant. Mm-hmm. Or, so it worked out okay. You know, like I said, it didn't last very long. It lasted mm-hmm. maybe like say uh, probably about a, 
two years or so. And as far as marketing consulting work was concerned, I knew nothing about designing websites. Yeah. I knew nothing about graphic design. I couldn't do anything of the, of the actual physical work, right? So I was like, well, fuck it then. I might as well just be like a consultant and then work with those people. So if I can find clients and then they need a website built, then what I'll do is I'll just connect them to with. a designer and then I'll get a kickback from that, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And if I can build up a huge volume of people that way, then that residual should be a, a good salary. That was mm. kind of my mindset. So I was building it up towards that. Mm. Um, and then when my daughter was born, that was my oh shit moment. I'm like, holy crap, I can't do this. <laughs> I'm holding a baby and I'm trying to Skype call with the client to try to close a deal on you know a whole comprehensive marketing approach. I'm like, I can't do this. This wow. is crazy. So I needed to, I needed to get out of the house first of all because I was just working from home the whole time. Mm-hmm. So I was doing late night like fucking in between feeding my kid, putting her down, I would take off to the closest McDonald's because they were open and then they would have free Wi-Fi. So I would actually be at a McDonald's near my house mm-hmm. from like, I don't know, midnight to like three in the morning, just trying to get caught up on a lot of work and stuff. And that didn't last very long. I did it for maybe about four weeks, four to six weeks. And I was like, okay, <coughs> I need a better work environment, right? Much like how you guys, you guys need a legit work environment. And then, yeah, through, uh, through some people that I graduated with, I found out that there was a friend of mine, a mutual friend, that ran a co-working space in Gastown called mm-hmm. the Network Hub. Called the Network Hub. Mm-hmm. And then, for some reason, it was just weird. Just like, you know, how the, how the stars align. Mm-hmm. So I, I hit her up, asking her, hey, what's up, what's up with this space? And she's like, yeah, you know, uh, I'm a co-working space that I provide uh, office rental, desk rental, things to, to, to tech startups and things like that. And I'm like, cool, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come hit you. I'm going to come visit you because I live in Coquitlam. And, um, and, I, I, and, I, and I was blown away. Went all the way to Gastown, went to visit her space, shouts to Mina. And uh, I was like, what the hell is this? Like, this is awesome. Just like you guys, like in, in your mentality, of like this could be a space for where I can see myself working. And not only that, and then uh, in the same thread, like I say probably within days of that, I, I, I heard through it. Through through another friend that I uh, that was another co-working space being managed by uh, another contact that I knew mm-hmm. so I hit him up I'm like somehow this whole co-working like concept just came mm-hmm. flying at me mm-hmm. and so I went to visit his uh, which is just right by Chinatown mm-hmm. called um, um, oh my god the hive the hive daily so, hive no it's just called the oh, hive, the hive? Okay, hive okay, Vancouver okay. yeah All right. so the hive is just right on the border uh, and it's and both locations are still there so network hub is in Gastown or Richard Street uh-huh. and then the uh, and then the hive is right at the borderline, right by the TNT at Stadium, just around the corner there. Sorry, what was the first one called again? Uh, the so. Network Hub. I've, I've, we've seen it. We've seen mm-hmm. it. We've, yeah. we've walked past, I've walked past this yeah. many times. Yeah, many times. That's, and, that's, and they have multiple locations yeah. now too, so. Oh, really? They got like oh. seven locations now, one in oh. Nanaimo, they got one in Chinatown now, one in Richmond, New Westminster, okay. so yeah, Mina's killing it. Um, so, but she's the one that literally brought the co-working movement into Vancouver mm. and she's still slaying at it. Like, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, what the hell is going on? Like the shitty part is I'm coming, I'm driving all the way from Coquitlam, like I'm, or I'm jumping on the SkyTrain, mm-hmm. just that commute alone and then coming back, you mm-hmm. know, and then obviously my wife's work, you know, she's on mat leave, thank God. Right. Yeah. But for me, like, man, I can't, I can't keep this up. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, is there any co-working spaces out in the burbs? None, right? Mm-hmm. So that's when it, I kind of just like, well, fuck it. If I, you know, is that what, if is that no one way? else is, if no one else is doing it, then I might as well do it, right? Uh-huh. And, may, and the selfish part was me is like, okay, so maybe the concept is, I'll get my own office space, mm-hmm. but then everyone else pays my rent for it. <laughs> that was like the yeah, selfish yeah, part of me. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. maybe that can work that way. Uh-huh. So. Uh, so my first initial thought, well, of course, let's open one in Coquitlam, right? Mm-hmm. But there was nothing, as far as I, you know, based on what I've seen out there in Yale Town and, and, and Gas Town and and, and and then doing research online in uh-huh. like Portland and Seattle and New York and seeing how these guys do it. And I'm like, yeah. you know, it's just, I needed a certain type of space, you uh-huh. know? So, um, and then I was like, well, it's also getting very saturated now because at that time there was probably maybe like 10 spaces in Vancouver mm-hmm. already, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, let's check out Surrey. Because I grew up in Surrey, I grew up in Surrey, North Delta, like, mm-hmm. and I and and for myself, like I know the amount of change, and you guys know, you guys grew mm-hmm. up here, right? So like, the amount of change in Surrey is ridiculous, but only we know, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Only That's we right. know, 
Yeah. No one else knows. That's, That's right. so true. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. Even yeah. the shit on TV, it's always a negative shit. So even yeah. then, everyone thinks we're backwards, right? It's yeah. So many people are just backwards. But we're it's actually progressing. It's oh, it's crazy. crazy. It's so fast yeah. growing. So people are sleeping on the city, right? Mm-hmm. So, so for myself, I'm like, okay, I don't have to compete with anybody. Uh, real estate is cheaper than whatever is out there, yeah. you know? And, <coughs> I'm, and then another big thing was I wanted to be close to SkyTrain. Surrey has SkyTrain, has mm-hmm. three stops in Sky, uh, That's three right. stops mm-hmm. in, the, in the city. So I'm like, what the fuck am I looking in? Because in, at that time, the, the Evergreen line to Kukulam yeah. didn't exist yet, and none of that, right? So, oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. right? So <laughs> like, it had Lohit's town yeah, center, yeah, right? Yeah. But then around there, there was nothing, nothing. suitable <laughs> as far as office space, too. Yeah. So, I, But believe me, I checked out in and around the whole Lohit corridor, too. And there was like nothing that I thought was going to work for me. So I'm like, well, here's a couple of spaces here in, in Surrey that I just kept showing up on some of the listings that I've been searching. So... And then, yeah, you know, one thing led to another, man. Uh, the interesting thing with Beta Collective was um, that actually happened right after TEDx SFU. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was right after, that, 2011 was a huge pivotal year, man. I had the mm-hmm. kid, and then uh, and then I just like, yeah. Again, when I was trying to do the soul searching, right? Like, I didn't know what to do. I'm mm-hmm. like, well, let's put some more things on my resume. So I decided to, 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 to put on TEDx SFU. So that mm-hmm. was my first thing. And, but that's how I led me to my business partner because yeah. um, Elvin and Michael at that time from Witty Cookie, which is a, a web development company that was um, that went through the whole SFU um, CF program. And they made school, the Beta Collective site? School of Interactive Arts, yeah, yeah. So oh. School of Interactive Arts and Technology, they're one of the alum, first alumni uh, yeah. of the CIAT uh, program here at, here at the Surrey campus. So that's how we connected because mm-hmm. I'm like, hey man, he, they held, they actually, for some reason, they actually headed the game. TEDx SFU, you need a license for it, right? Uh, so TED, TED.com, actually needs to issue you that license. In order to host. Right. Ah, so, okay. you know, at SF, I was like, so I was like, okay, good. I, so for myself, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, let, let's try to organize one for SFU. So I'm, I'm searching. I'm like, why is this license taken already? Hmm. Who took it? So I was like trying to track down whoever had it. And it ended up being Michael and Elvin. I'm like, holy oh. fuck. So these guys are ahead of the game. They just... But they were holding on to it for like three years. Yeah. They did nothing with it. <laughs> right? So, yeah. And at that time, I happened to actually be sitting on the board of directors for SFU's uh, Alumni Association. And then uh, as a board as a board of directors, we're like, hey, what, do, what else do we want to do with the alumni? Like, I was like, hey, how about we hold a TEDx conference? And that's when that led to, so who owns this asset? Right? Who owns this license so we can actually run it? So, so connecting with them. Had a great experience running that whole conference with them. So... After that, I was like, that's when I pitched them the idea. I'm like, hey, guys, got this little idea here. What do you think about a co-working space out here in Surrey? Yeah. And, you know, yeah, every dollar out of our pocket, like, let's make this happen. And, and so that was 24. So that was 2013, 2013. Mm-hmm. So a couple years later, uh, we finally decided to, like, finally do the research. So 2014, we found a location. It wasn't any of these locations. It wasn't. It wasn't. The one. Okay. No, we were actually back at King George Station. All right. Fuck! It was we were between like a tanning salon and a supermarket, <laughs> uh, Indian oh, supermarket. I know which one. I know which one. Yeah. Right there, and the yeah, money mart. On the corner, on the corner of yeah. uh, Wally Boulevard and 100 Avenue. Right? Yeah, right. Okay. So right where Taste of India is. Right? So <laughs> yeah. we're in that complex. So, uh, and the reason why we chose it, a couple things. One was <coughs> it was a short term lease. Uh, I think uh, the landlord or the tenant had like 16, 18 months left on the thing. Yeah. So just in case. So basically we said, you know what, let's throw the money at it. If Beta Collective goes to shit, we can just walk away. Right? Exactly. We're not stuck on a long-term mm-hmm. yeah. lease and, you know, landlord's going to be, fuck you, pay me, right? So yeah. we just like, you know what, let's do this. Prove the concept. And then, uh, but it wasn't the most ideal space. We, were, we had no, there was no windows. That was the worst thing, yeah. right? Uh, but what it did have was it had a bunch of offices all built out already. So we didn't really have to do much in terms of renovations. So, like, so just furnishing, right? Yeah, just furnishing. So, um, so yeah, like we scoured Craigslist, fucking Ikea, everything. And just like, it was just a mismatch. It wasn't, definitely wasn't the prettiest. Even our, you know, you know, building that older place definitely wasn't like our main thing. Like this is obviously a lot different from how it was. This mm-hmm. is kind of the closest to what I've envisioned to mm-hmm. what it would look like, right? So... But yeah, that took five years, man. You know, really. So, so yeah. this is very recent. Then this is like yeah. 2014. The 2014, of, man. The yeah, I was brand new at it. I never started a business. I mean, I, I don't even consider like doing that consultancy thing like mm-hmm. as entrepreneurial. Like I just did it because I was out of desperation. Like I had a I had a strong network from the mm-hmm. Burnaby Board of Trade, so I had good hookups in terms of people who could provide the service. 
And then, you know, <clears throat> over time I was kind of building all my sales skills. So mm-hmm. I was able to like, you know, find, find clients that way and then kind of merge that together. Mm-hmm. Didn't pay a lot cause I, you know, I didn't really, you know, grow it as strongly as I could, um, as I wanted to. And then, uh, but then, but then I, I was planning on keeping that up while I was growing Beta Collector. I always thought Beta Collector was just going to be like a, it's like a side hustle, right? Side gig. If, side gig, if I can just keep people to pay for my office. Yeah. Cool, I can start growing this. But after opening Beta, it just, it just shifted, right? Mm-hmm. It just, you know, and, you know, I think part of the fortunate side of things was, you know, my marketing i guess experience was able to apply to growing this business Mm -hmm. and then seeing this thing grow i was like heck and it's pulling so much more of my time i thought might as well just make that jump now instead of trying to you know scrape and try to find new clients this way and and being a marketing consultant honestly it's just fuck you know if you guys start going to networking events you're gonna see consultants everywhere Mm -hmm. you almost hate them with a passion i'm like i don't want to be like i don't i don't want to be that guy you know so (laughs) you know here i actually have a legit brick and mortar business yep. like it's tangible i can tell people proudly that i run a physical yeah. business it's good for the community too so yeah you know so business. yeah so, you know i think my, my 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 that 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 sort of business plan that i built was all about attracting young tech startups i wanted to copy those guys in downtown right yeah. i wanted mm-hmm. to, you know they were attracting that i'm like i wanted to do that i didn't get a single one of that type of client when i when i opened it was it was like scary because i was like fuck you know like that's that's my target market and I'm uh-huh. not, not attracting them. What that I what I ended up getting was like fucking I had like an eighty year old realtor. Yeah. A bunch of multi level marketing people, Filipino no, no uh-huh. nothing against the Filipino, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Filipino mark, ML, uh, MLM people, um <laughs> event planners, you know, I was like, man, what a weird mix. Yeah, but, but uh, at that time like I had to pay rent. So <coughs> beggars can't be choosers. So exactly. I just said yes to everybody. You yeah. Know? yeah. The funny thing was like the, the the silver lining to all that though is like it's actually probably the best decision I ever made was to say yes to everybody. Mm-hmm. Was then it created a real it started creating a culture here. Yeah, it started creating a vibe that was super diverse. different, diverse from what I was seeing at those tech centric networking hubs, mm-hmm. uh, uh, tech centric working spaces, or some of these like. Um, social uh, you know environmental sustainability uh ones um like the hive was and uh i was like hmm, that's that's kind of cool right so i've been fostering that and so even to this day i think in, as far as tech companies that are in my space I probably, they probably make up like 15 percent of my clientele whereas mm-hmm. everyone else is like non-profits and um you know labor related you yeah. know trucking logistics that yeah. sort of thing so it's just a huge mismatch uh, mishmash of of clients but when you see them at the lunchroom and they're like hanging out and talking to each other like the conversations are awesome yeah mm-hmm. it's so vibrant you know otherwise you're in a tech centric thing you're just gonna talk tech all tech, day yeah, exactly. you know if you're an art if you're an art and thing you're just gonna be an art art geek and just talking art all day here you're talking about all kinds of stuff and, mm-hmm. and especially when it's different demographics too. We got old people, mm-hmm. young people, yeah. like you guys. Mm-hmm. And um, so there's just so many, it's such a, it's such a vibrant yeah. thing. And, uh, and I'm like, and it's something that I'm so proud to see, right? Yeah. So it, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty badass. And, yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, like hearing all this, like it really matches with the ma- with your name now. Beta collective, like this, yeah, this collective, this too. collective cultures, all these people coming together. Yeah, I, I, that's one of the things I remember when we first got the tour yeah. um, back at the old office over there. Yeah. Um, there's there's all these people here. Everyone's so nice here. Like yeah, everyone's yeah, so nice, yeah. and we don't even know them. Yeah, right? yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. It's all good. Yeah. Um, as far as the word beta, mm-hmm. um, just in the tech world, mm-hmm. um, I always envisioned this space, and to this day, I still it still reflects that mission too. Is it's constantly in beta mode, yeah. right? It's it's wow. always fluid. It's always ever changing. Anytime there's a new group, new company, new member that comes into the space, yeah. it again changes that dynamic. We've never it, done the build. It just changes that dynamic slightly, mm-hmm. right? So you never <laughs> you're never gonna have that final final product. product yeah. It's just gonna be always like changing and adapting, yeah. and uh, and that's you know that's been my purpose, and I've been kind of living that to this that's day, dope. and um, and so now even. Another pivot is I'm serving, I'm trying to service more like social enterprises now too. Yeah. And the reason why is because I end up, I have about a dozen nonprofit organizations 
that work out of this space in some capacity. Mm -hmm. And that happened super organically. I didn't cold call them, I didn't sell them, I didn't close on them. They just approached me and like, hey, we need space. So now I got a dozen of these nonprofits and and, they're, and you know this neighborhood, right, mm -hmm. in Wally. There's a lot of resources that's required in this in this community, mm -hmm. and these guys are bringing it. Mm -hmm. You know, people. We got groups like the John Howard Society. They came. They do so much work in the downtown east side, and they just got some grant money to do project to almost duplicate a lot of that work that they do out here in Wally. Right? It's very similar demographic mm -hmm. of people. People that are disenfranchised, marginalized, and that sort of thing, and having them in this space. And, and, and having all their caseworkers going out there on a daily basis, reaching out to them, like, man, you know, they came and found me because they needed that space. Mm -hmm. Now in my mind, I'm like, man, you've taught me something because I want more of you guys into this space because mm -hmm. if, if, if I could be that launch pad or that hub to get these guys to serve out their mission for the community, it's a win-win, you know, yeah. like mm -hmm. everybody That's benefits, right? right? Yeah. And yes, there's some government, you know, assistance, like in terms of funding these nonprofits, but it's also, there's also a part from kind of, I guess, beta collective at the grassroots level, helping them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like government's not going to be like, Hey, let me give you a building for you guys to work on it. Right. Like, yeah. no, they were able to like, they were able to, you know, fortunately connect with me and be like, Hey, this is what we want to do in this community. Mm -hmm. You got the space for it. I'm like, fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Let me see. You know, let what an opportunity! Wow. If I can help you, and that and that's great, you know. So, um, so that's sort of been my pivot in terms of changing Beta Collective now. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of adjusted a new tagline. So, as cheesy as it sounds, now I'm calling Beta Collective is the hub for community impact. Yeah. All right. So the hub for community impact is is really what I'm really focused on nice. this year. I'm super passionate about because it it's just you need groups like that to change the game and yeah you know what I mean like if there's just so much stigma out here and like we were saying right like on the news all the shit you hear about in Surrey yeah it's always fucking negative yeah right mm -hmm. but if it's positive it's not news yeah exactly yeah. Right? to me I'm like you don't need the news about that but mm -hmm. I'd rather just prove the prove the people wrong mm -hmm. you guys want to sleep on Surrey you know mm -hmm. we're gonna do shit that you guys ain't ever seen yeah you know? and you know, or if we're seeing what's happening in downtown East Side and all these other, you know, um, disenfranchised areas, you know, here's a real opportunity for a lot of these nonprofits to really see Surrey as like a, like almost like a guinea pig to mm -hmm. kind of say, hey, you know, here's all the shit that we've tried, never worked. Here's a real true opportunity to try to just do something different and mm -hmm. see if it can work, you know, and. You know, so for me, I would love to have at some point have like fucking 30, 40 nonprofits working out of this space, all kind of interrelated. They may be doing their own stuff, serving their own clients. You know, some people are working with, you know, um, refugees from Syria. Others are working from, you know, people that are down from Latin America, mm. you know, opioid addiction, HIV, whatever that, whatever that. Hey, but there's when you come into a space like this and you guys are all kind of, you know, working towards that same goal is just to better everybody. Yeah. Powerful. Dude, that's like, you can feel that energy, right? Yeah, like that yeah, energy yeah. is like there, man. I'm like, and, and like, and I've, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit of a, uh, that vibe mm -hmm. already. I'm like, fuck, I want to get more of it here. Yeah. It's just, it's addicting. It's, it's so cool to hear stories like that. Um, and to me, I'm like, again, nothing against the tech people, but like, man, those stories, when you hear, when you hear about that, it's like way more interesting to, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it gets yeah. you thinking, it gets you, and imagine like down the road we do have some more tech people and they can converge like that's that's what being in beta mode is all about right yeah, like mm -hmm. you, you have all these overlaps all and parallels doing. you know and then they might get inspired like tech people they might be thinking about well let me do a dating app another dating app and then let me build this and that what if you can like listen to these stories from what are people that are being disenfranchised and these nonprofits that have no money to fucking build an app yeah can you guys can work together and mm -hmm. serve a common purpose that way, converge tech with uh, social enterprise, dude, like that's, you know, mm -hmm. in a way like Beta Collective's done its job, you know, exactly. I didn't force it, I didn't make it, it just happened exactly. organically, right? So, so that's, you know, that's kind of like my new thing now, you know, mm -hmm. it's just trying to cater to these guys and, and see what I can. So, hey, anyone that's out there listening, uh, if you guys know a nonprofit, know a social enterprise, you guys are yourselves trying to like build a social enterprise concept or business uh, model, like hit me up, man. I want to hear that story because uh, I mm -hmm. think you know. I really think that Beta Collective can help. I've seen yeah. it. Ha you know, I've seen it. I've s I see it on the daily. How yeah. it's how it's helped a lot of these organizations to grow and expand. Wow. 
you know um yeah man that's like kind of my new kind of mission so that's dope i haven't even, I haven't even talked about the kitchen yet but that's <laughs> <laughs> i can leave it at that for now so yeah wow, wow. I love that huge, huge story right there. Uh, From sorry, sorry, I take time. No, no, I don't even know how much time you had. <laughs> no, it's fine. I was like, yeah, you dude, kept looking at your phone. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. It wasn't this, that. It wasn't I'm, that I'm, I'm blabbing, man. So. And no, it's, yeah. it's, 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 right. it's inspiring. Cool. It's cool. it's amazing. Yeah. Like the one thing I love about shooting shooting our podcast is that, in some ways, that that, that story kind of aligns that what your dream, what you want want it to be now. Yeah. Like I I I loved what you said about like. Don't sleep on Surrey. Don't don't sleep on the city. No, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. No. We like, didn't. We're not. No. Yeah, exactly. Like I through this podcast and one one of the goals that I've ultimately want is like to showcase like our city itself. Totally. Yeah, right. Exactly. To like just and to showcase the people around here, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I want them to like tell their stories yeah. and like there's there's more positive than there is negative about yeah. Surrey and that's like, why I think when you first came into the office and then you just told me that sort of that one line, you know, uh, I think my first words to you guys like Dude, just make it happen, then. Like, mm-hmm. just make it happen, because I, I believe in it for sure. Because yeah. it's mm-hmm. it's it's something that I've been like standing on my milk crate, trying to fucking scream to people yeah, to yeah. like, hey, you know what, Beta Collective, not just Beta Collective, <laughs> but like, you know, I'm here because mm-hmm. Beta Collective can be supported by a, a community yeah. that pe- everyone else has been sleeping on. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, um, it's just, you know, it's a testament to, yeah, you know, what this city <coughs> can do, but no one knows about it and. To me, from a business standpoint, sure, I'm happy because I have no competition per se, exactly. right? Mm-hmm. And then even if someone were to come in this year or next year, I had a five-year runway to mm-hmm. get this That's thing right. going, right? Yeah, so, you know, um, so in that sense, I I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll be okay in terms of some, sustain, some sustainability, at least for the next few years. Mm-hmm. Who knows if some bigger cats come in with like, you know, 100,000 square feet and just behemoths, right? Then and. You know, there's some rumblings now, just through kind of the circles that I'm in. I've been hearing about people kind of, you know, some of these bigger groups wanting to open spaces. Mm-hmm. But to me, like that's just that just builds credibility for yeah. me. Mm-hmm. You know, that's exactly, right. exactly. Because you they the can way. come in with millions, <laughs> like you know, like the WeWorks and stuff. Like they can come in with huge marketing dollars and just like <coughs> a huge splash in Surrey. Yeah. Like we're here. They're gonna fucking put a flag. Yeah, yeah. You know, right in downtown, right by SkyTrain or something, and just like, you know it'll be like a big pissing contest or whatever, yeah. right? But for me, I'm like, hey, you know what? You guys put out the marketing dollars. I don't spend a lick of it, Yeah. but my phone's gonna ring because the moment you hear, they, they, you know, these guys make uh, make waves about co-working almost every time. Like when WeWork first opened in downtown, so I don't know if you guys know about WeWork, but WeWork is pretty much, it's the world's largest co-working business. Mm-hmm. Um, they started in New York. Yeah, I've seen them in New York. That's 18 why. over 18 billion dollar valuation oh, yeah fucking massive so um they finally broke ground and came into the vancouver market i want to say about a year ago about a year and a bit ago and they took up over uh bentall four bentall four building mm-hmm. uh, bentall has five buildings so ben- ben- bentall four they took up six floors and i think it's like six hundred thousand square feet or something oh. So six floors, five of the floors belong to, uh, they, they, they rented it out to Amazon staff. Oh, and right. they got another like 100,000 square feet that's just strictly for co-working, right? So <laughs> just massive. But if you go into their spaces, stunning, stunning spaces, right? Mm-hmm. This is like, fuck, I sunk, I, sunk, I sunk a little over 100 grand on something like this. Like they mm-hmm. sunk millions. Okay. So anything that's like exposed wood brick you know exposed brick and even if there's no brick in the building they'll put brick in the walls you know yeah. like you know like cast iron tables that cost like 80 g's each or yeah. whatever like, <laughs> yeah. that's the sort of money that you play with right uh-huh. and so they open in downtown and then they just and then i think uh, eight months ago they opened in uh, gas town mm-hmm. and then just four or five months ago they opened in uh, mount pleasant off Main Street there, mm-hmm. and then they just announced in September they're going to open. Uh, they, they took over Station Square at Metro Town. Damn, that's crazy. Right? So they're 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 making their way. They're making yeah, their way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I know, like, I wouldn't be surprised in like the next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we work just like Is here. drops their pants and be like, "Fuck, we're here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Big dick man's here. You know, what I mean? like, <laughs> like I can I can sense it. I can see it. Uh, I just don't know exactly what building. I, was, I got a pretty good eye on, uh, a good ear on, you know, what are the buildings that could potentially be available. Mm-hmm. So uh, so far, I haven't really identified anything specific yet. 
but they could easily build one. You know what I mean? They could yeah. just easily say, you know what, fuck it. You know, nothing, <laughs> nothing suitable for us. We're just gonna <laughs> buy it. Well, you know, yeah. or you know, they'll talk with one of the landlords. You know, at SFU mm-hmm. Tower, like the yeah. Surrey Tower there, and maybe just like boot a bunch of these guys out. We'll yeah. just take up all this, right? Like oh, they could yeah. easily. That means I'm out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So like I know that that's gonna happen, um, and I think that's and so that's another part of the reason why I'm I'm, I'm kind of pivoting, shifting gears, right? Mm-hmm. If they're still gonna because their main bag is young tech startups, you know, mm-hmm. entrepreneurs and you know digital nomads and all those guys, right? Yeah. For me, I'm like, go ahead, take them. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't compete. Mm-hmm. You know, these guys are gonna, you know, guys like them are gonna want something shiny, something cool, something new, something funky. You know, this is what I can do with what I can afford. You know. Um, it's very ideal for nonprofits and social enterprises. So I can, I'll sign on to those guys all day long yeah. if I want to, if I can, right? And, I, and if that's the case, they're not gonna go to the WeWorks. Yeah. First of all, they can't afford it. Yeah, it's way expensive. Yeah, right? And second of all, it's just the wrong vibe. You know? oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, gonna be a, it's gonna be a totally yeah. different vibe for them, right? Yeah. So for me, if I can create that culture here and be like, you come in, you're gonna feel like family, you know? It's, it's gonna be like your home away from home type mm-hmm. of thing, mm-hmm. you know? Then I, I found my market niche so I can maintain that sort of niche, like boutique, boutique bo- co-working space versus like a Walmart, you know, of yeah, co-working, yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, people are still going to love Walmart. You know? yeah. People still love Costco, still but some people still love the mom and pop, you know, Langley Farm Market or mm-hmm. you yeah, know, something yeah. like that, right? That's There's right. always going to be that market. So if I can kind of just be more clear cut with that, I'm cool, you know. You know, the sandbox is big enough for everyone to play in, so. <laughs> So dope. So much to yeah, take. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's really, really <laughs> inspiring. Like, I, I swear to you, like, every episode that we've had so far, every every speaker that we've had, we've, we've always left just, like, inspired. Just like, yeah. and, and this is one of them. So yeah, it's definitely. Like, so, yeah. And, like, the, the business aspect, amazing. Well thought out. Like, you're in the game. Five years running of this co-working space. Oh, man, this like, was never a well thought out thing. <laughs> Like, I'll, I'll tell You're you. You're working can, it though. That's if the I thing. can, if I can show you the Word doc of my original business plan for Beta Collective, <laughs> <laughs> you would look at me like, "What the fuck is this?" Uh-huh. It's so uh-huh. different from like. I mean, I think the mission and like sort of like you know what Beta Collective you know was set out to kind of do mm-hmm. is similar, but in terms of like you know who I anticipated it was going to come into the space and you know how I was going to fucking rock this place and, and, and whatever it's so different right and uh, even, obviously the numbers and figures are completely off the chart like not even close so um, but yeah I mean that's that, that's I think that's part of that sort of entrepreneurial drive if, if you guys have it or any of the people listening have that mm-hmm. it's like don't get caught up in that it, it's okay it, it's mm-hmm. just a blueprint it's just a sort of a guiding star, you know, <coughs> you know, it doesn't need to be fucking solid, you mm-hmm. know, and, and it's okay, you know, if it's totally, if you're totally off the mark and you found another opportunity, that's okay too, right? Mm-hmm. Like the only thing I would say is, you know, whatever direction you end up going with, give it a real shake, like just go for it till it, till it fails or go to it till it, pa- till it succeeds, right? Yeah, that was find, find out versus mm-hmm. like half acid, right? Um, like yeah, there's no such thing as halfway crooks, right? Like yeah, you just exactly. gotta you gotta go in and just see for yourself. Otherwise, you're always gonna be left guessing. Like that's right. I didn't, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Might as well. Like for me, you know, I could easily just stay in that building one mm-hmm. and do nothing. Yeah. And I'll be alright, you know. But there was just always that part of me, like, what if I, what if I expanded a little bit more? Mm-hmm. You know, not to be super greedy, but just be expanding more because I'm at capacity, and some really good organ organizations have approached me that I had to turn them away because I don't have space for yeah, space. Yeah. But what if I could accommodate them? You know, what if I could support them? What if I could support more people with this new mission, mm-hmm. right? And so that kind of led me to this. I'm like, but then fuck, I'm, I've doubled my space. That means I've doubled my rent, mm-hmm. you yeah. know? You know, and my landlord is going to be, you know, double on me to make sure I meet, I meet rent every month, right? <coughs> so those things obviously scare you and, and mm-hmm. hold you back sometimes, but... You know, like I said, at some point you got to take that shot just mm-hmm. to know, right? So for myself, I mean, I hate to think about it, but if I were to, if this thing were to hit, you know, shit hits the fan and I fail on it, like I'm content, like I'm mm-hmm. cool with that. As you did it. Yeah. I did it. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm, I'm proud of that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys read a bunch of autobiographies of a lot of like um, entrepreneurs and stuff. Like I'm just reading Richard Branson from Virgin. I'm yeah. just reading... Uh, um, I lost my virginity or whatever. Uh, I just I just just starting to read that book now. Man, the number of times he's failed. So many. He's got right? so many businesses. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? He like 
you know, in life, literally, it's like you can fail a hundred times. You yeah. just need that one win. Mm-hmm. And if it's a big win, that fucking trumps that last life. Every fucking nine other losses, yeah. all the L's that you took. You exactly. know what I mean? That's what so, I gamble. Yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know, on the gambling side, with it, that, maybe that's a little bit, I like to do more calculated gambling, you yeah. know, there's a little bit of calculated risk involved, yeah. but, you know, but that that's the sort of thing that, uh, you know, I've learned just, mm. but just in the last five years too, right? Like mm. I, you know, I was, I was never like that. I was always mm. just, you know, yeah, corporate, corporate ladder. That's the, that's the way I was going to do it. And then, mm. you know, it, it's funny how things change. Yeah. Things change, yeah. When things happen in your life too, right? Yeah. You know, having a kid and stuff, I'm like, holy fuck. It just puts a lot of things in perspective, and and you would think though, like if if you had a kid, it would just be like, it would just be like, oh, okay, I think I just got to go back, get that back corporate, corporate structure, yeah, yeah, I need that like stability, I gotta, I gotta get diapers, man, I gotta get, <laughs> get that security, get that diaper money. <laughs> I want to ask you when, um, like five, going back five years ago when you like, just started up beta, yeah, um, like, was there a moment where you, like, you knew like, okay, like this. Like, this can work like, like 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 this can work out you know like i'm onto something here uh i would say it would probably be month six of opening beta for the first time the first yeah. five months i remember oh my gosh i think it was probably about five weeks or four or five weeks after we did a whole bunch of renovation we painted um and bought in a bunch of the furniture Mm-hmm. And then we had a little soft launch. We did like an opening. I tried to blast it out to everybody that I knew in my network mm-hmm. and then um, had a bit of a grand opening thing, but maybe only like 30 people showed up or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then it was the end of that night and then my partner left. The, I remember distinctly at the end of the night, I literally sat like in one of the one of the offices by myself. Yeah. It was probably like midnight. And literally I just thought, what the fuck did I just, what the, What have I gotten myself into, <laughs> right? No clients, phone's not ringing, no email leads, mm. nothing, right? And I was like, holy fuck, you know, did I just lose, I think we sunk like 20, 22 grand each or whatever, right? So did I just lose 22 grand or right? whatever? And, um, <coughs> but then I'd say, I'd say probably about a week or two after that, mm-hmm random phone calls like we just kept up what we were doing so we we yeah. did a bunch of craigslist ads that was our big and even to this day i still do craigslist ads too mm-hmm. so um and then out of nowhere i got like two or three inquiries from craigslist asking about the space and i'm like you know i'm not holding my breath it's just like mm-hmm. hey you know i i showed it a handful of times so far no bites um you know this might not be any different but i'll do it anyways and mm-hmm. um yeah, but then slowly but surely we had, a, I think we had a total of seven offices in that space, seven or eight offices in that space. So from that day, which was fifth week in, had about one or two clients in, but then it started getting like a lot more mm-hmm. um, thing. I don't know why. Yeah. We didn't really do anything. We didn't do any SEO. We didn't do any, um, I think we did one small Facebook campaign. Uh, we did one like super sketchy like email scrape where we like, blasted. <laughs> <laughs> I think our like conversion rate was like point zero zero one, and uh, maybe we got blacklisted after that. So <laughs> yeah, so lesson learned: don't ever do any sketchy email scrapes and blasts. But um, but then yeah, maybe I would say about six months. Six months was when I think we started knowing we were onto something. Like we got some traction. Yeah. Out of the seven offices, I think we had four filled. Um, and so the first two were actually people we knew. Yeah. So it's like friends yeah. and family, right? Mm-hmm. So we literally gave them like a super cheap rate just to get some warm bodies in yeah. here. But it comes month six, we had about three or four that just came out of the blue. Yeah. Never met them, didn't know them, didn't know what they were doing. So I'm like, okay, these are like legit clients, right? Yeah. Like legit customers. So for them to sign on and, and come on board with us, I'm like, okay. I think we're on to something. Mm-hmm. And then, but I'm like, they could leave any time, mm-hmm. they could quit or mm-hmm. whatever. But then within within the year, uh, we were still, we, we were at capacity, um, no one left. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. So that's when we knew. And even in the shittiest of offices too, because it was a shitty office. Yeah. I wasn't even, like I think I got paler each time out each <laughs> month I was there. Like there's like no vitamin D, right? Like there's no, no sunlight, nothing. Yeah. But we were full. So we're like, okay cool I think you know 
So now that our lease is coming up, it was like, yeah, it was a 16 month sublease. So after 16 months, the landlord mm-hmm. was like, you guys want to re-up with us? And I was like, no. Nah. It was a straight Get note. some windows. We needed some windows. <laughs> and, uh, so we were scoping and scouring and obviously we had a certain budget, you know, yeah. um, in terms of how much we were willing to pay each month. And uh, so when we came across that opportunity just uh, in the building next door, mm-hmm. we actually moved everybody into the top floor first. Mm-hmm. And there was never a kitchen up there too. If you notice, there was a kitchen up there. There was never a kitchen there. We had to oh, really? Build, we had to build a whole, bring whole new plumbing oh, and everything. Wow. Mm. Fuck, if you can imagine like mustard green, like carpet walls uh. and like holes in the carpet on the floor. Like what building has carpet and carpet? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Oh, carpet yeah. and carpet? On the wall? Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's not carpet per se. It's like, yeah, you know, like that, that like, fuzzy yeah. shit. Yeah, 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 so they have that fuzzy wall, like fuzzy <laughs> wallpaper stuff. I'm like, who the fuck does that nowadays? Like, yeah. obviously it's super old. Like, no one did nothing, right? Yeah. So so we had to tear all that up. All, we did all the laminate ourselves. We tore all the wall down, did all the drywall ourselves, and wow. changed all the light bulbs and uh, all the light tubes and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, yeah, if you need a home renovator, hit me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I moonlight like that, Handy too. Man, man. That's, my, that's my other side hustle. Yeah. <laughs> got a homie um, on the live chat, um, Meltic. Uh, he got a quick question for you, a very funny question. Have you ever got any Twitch streamers hit in here? No. Probably like the closest bet. Huh? I'd love to see more of them. Yeah. Live streamers? I don't know if they need a space like this, <laughs> yeah, right. Right? Other, than their home, other than their home like, like bedroom or right. you know, home office or whatever. But yeah, yeah that'd be cool. You know, it's definitely a, it's definitely a, a, a medium that I haven't got, had much other than observing from afar, mm-hmm. right? And just like, yeah, you know, like my daughter actually likes seeing some guys on Twitch playing, you know, Minecraft and, and that sort of thing uh-huh. on Fortnite. But For sure. beyond that, we had nothing, you know, I haven't seen if there's been a sort of a business case for it. Mm-hmm. But I totally, like, I can totally imagine. I wouldn't be surprised if there's... I, People are making money from a business standpoint yeah. on it, right? So versus being an influencer and mm-hmm. gaming, I think you can do. It. There's a lot to apply to that. So, um, yeah. Okay. But awesome. anyways, yeah. So we were yeah. So after next door, ha- so basically when we made, made that move because it's the same size square footage at the old building. So mm-hmm. I'm like we're like praying. Okay, we're gonna move here. Does anybody want to move with us? everyone moved with us wow. so the moment we took over that news that that top floor like we were already revenue neutral uh-huh. so i was like awesome right so yeah. we just have to hang tight and then we're like wait what do we do now because we're kind of like packed to the night we we're so packed mm-hmm. and then downstairs was available uh-huh. which is where you guys are now yeah and uh that was that was been available always but upstairs was just a lot easier because plumbing if you don't know about construction and stuff like that you know, there's a ceiling, there's a gap here between the mm-hmm. ceiling and then the next floor above, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're running plumbing and stuff, it's super easy. If you're on the ground floor, you're dealing with concrete. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That takes a lot more, it's a lot more costly and this and that. So we just weren't in a position to even do anything down mm-hmm. there. Uh-huh. So, but it was about five months after we stabilized upstairs and got everybody in there. That's when we decided to put in an offer to take over downstairs. I wow. see. So that was 2,000 square feet we took over another 2,000 square feet so we doubled our capacity mm. so in that sense we started all over again to try to, find, to try to find new clients right so yeah so obviously this is a repeat of what I've done exactly. you know exp- yeah it's, it's, it's exponential yeah maybe I'll do yeah. 16,000 next yeah, time no, 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 fuck <laughs> that. <laughs> I think I'm good I think I'm good but yeah no it was so that was scary making that next plunge right mm-hmm. was uh, okay now we have an empty office downstairs that we needed to fill uh-huh. But it probably took us took us a little bit longer, but I think it was probably about nine or ten months. Mm, okay. Yeah, we we, we uh, it took us to to fill it up, and then um, and then we kind of just coasted until yeah last year, um, last fall was when there was a, a nonprofit group that was here, so they were moving out. So I had my eye on this floor uh, for a I while. See. Okay, I just wasn't sure if I was gonna do it or not yeah. because it's obviously it's double the size, so it's double my rent double right money. yeah double the money so um and then i and i and then i knew for a fact i'm like if i'm gonna take this place over i can't make most of it man like mm-hmm. even all the rentals that we did over there most of it was me my partner elvin and then my dad so uh, uh, like every laminate floor you saw there was like <coughs> us every frame around the door and every window was us every door lock that we we installed ourselves every light fixture we actually replaced because there was a bunch of uh, bleeding ones with the about the ballast batteries were fucking bleeding battery fluid oh we changed all of those out 
so yeah i mean so in that sense like as much as there i felt that you know it was like just budgetary right mm -hmm. it was just like minimum viable product mvp mm -hmm. uh I'm fucking proud as fuck that we built that. Because <laughs> yeah. you know? that was like bl literally blood, sweat, and tears. Like yeah. me, my dad, and Elvin, we did that, right? Mm -hmm. So like I would, that holds a, a special place for me. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, whereas then coming here, I was like, okay, let's do it legit. So yeah. I didn't do a single yeah. thing in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that, yeah. do that, do that. Yeah, I, I wanted to mount that, but I was like, fuck that. I'm going to hire someone to mount that. <laughs> so, and then it kind of fucked up too because it's not even centered. So I'm not going to come back though. I'm not, no, I'm actually going to buy the square LED panels uh -huh. to actually make some sort of a L. Like it's almost like a down and a thing to, to almost um, symbolize like a launch pad. Oh, okay. Right? So it'll be kind of like a. So yeah, so Best Buy has square versions of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do a. When the time comes, but I'll have it there. Then it'll be more centered. I'll actually have something that's more of a centered type of thing. For sure. It's so beautiful. It's just like. When you talk, like you guys can't see it, but yeah, there you go. I'm looking, I'm looking. Yeah, when yeah. you talk, it yeah. just goes with it. There you go. <laughs> nice. That's crazy. That's there you go. Nano leaf, buy one. Yeah. yeah. Shameless plug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sponsor. Sponsor. Hey. But, um, yeah. How, how's fatherhood? Ten years. <laughs> yeah, man, good. Um, my daughter, my oldest is eight, so I got two daughters. So my oldest, two. Yeah. Okay. My oldest is eight, and then my youngest is uh, four and a half, almost five. She'll be five in August. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the way I tell people, man, if you ever want to start a business, uh, you can have kids. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but just so you know, it's doable with kids. Yeah. That's, that's that's part of the message that I want to say. It's actually not oh. impossible because <laughs> I think I. I would be a prime example of, like, you know, someone that's still willing to grind it out and hustle. It's, you know, obviously it's harder, it's harder for sure. You know, well, you got mouths to feed every yeah. day. Yeah. You know, that gotta, pressure, you know, you got to get that diaper money every day. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, if you don't make any money, the kids don't eat, you know, so there's been some challenging times mm -hmm. and obviously a very patient wife. Cause again, when, you know, you have somebody that has sort of like that legit job, corporate job and you know pays to cover you know our, our living while I'm spending money like mm -hmm. I'm spending money here to get it up to running right so you know it, it has its share of challenges mm -hmm. um, but on the flip side running a business like this gives me a lot of flexibility mm -hmm. right uh, I take my kids to school every day um, I pick them up every day um, you know I don't a lot of people might not be able to do that, right? Mm -hmm. they gotta, if they got a Monday to Friday nine to five, then they got to figure something out in terms mm -hmm. of babysitting in the beginning and stuff, mm -hmm. or at the end of the day. So, um, I got a amazing mother in law. That's without her, I don't even know how we can even have kids to begin with. Uh, so she uh, shouts to mom. She's killing it. Shout out MVP, the real MVP. <laughs> for sure, man. It's a thankless job, man. Like, for me to have meetings and this and that where I'm like, okay, I got to just drop you off at home right now. You got to hang out with grandma while I come back here and do things. You know, that's, mm -hmm. family is number one, mm -hmm. right? So, so I think part of the thing is where people feel like, oh, pressure if you have a kid or, you know, whatever, or you're married or whatever, that you can't start a business. To me, that's my single biggest motivating factor. And that's yeah. what gets me up every that's day. That's what gets you going. You know, like there's, like I said, you know, if you don't hustle, you don't make the money, they don't eat. Mm -hmm. That If that's not motivation for you, I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, so that gives me that extra, you know, and that's where I find myself, you know, I'm working harder than the next guy. Mm -hmm. If you're running another co-working space, I, I can guarantee you I'm hustling harder than you. Right? Yeah. I have to, you know what I mean? So so that's that That to me is, is great. So I'm, 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 in a way, I'm proud and I'm glad that I have children um, mm -hmm. it's yeah it's definitely not easier or harder it's just it's it would be different um, oh yeah but it's just all mentality right because I, I know people that are that have zero baggage not even a, you know not even a spouse or <laughs> no mortgage or whatever and they still like are struggling right mm -hmm. so you know but everyone has their own different battles too right so I don't, I don't judge on that it's more just you know but if you are in a similar position as me it's doable if you're if you're considering you know sort of going that entrepreneurial route but yeah, yeah. but that's the thing having that family time is huge too so mm -hmm. i bring my kids to work from time to time i don't think you've, have you seen them yet no no I mean, yeah it's so, just the one time you suddenly mentioned that uh, you were doing 
confirmation. Uh, her confirmation. Yeah, and, uh, her first communion is going to be this uh, this yeah, Sunday. Yeah. So yeah, okay. we're pretty stoked about that. And okay. uh, yeah, baby's growing up. <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy, just crazy. Lovely. So, yeah, it's great. <clears throat> um, well, that was great. L- yeah. Lots of words to take there. So many highlights that, that I want to peek out. But um, uh, moving on to off the dome, which is uh, close to our closing segment. Uh, pretty much off the dome is uh, the first. Oh yeah, no worries. Um, basically, off off the top of the head, what what the first thing? Basically, I'm gonna say something, and what's the first thing that comes to your mind right away? Sure. So. Uh, off the dome, first word, or first quote, social media. It's a drug. The drug? It's facts. It's a drug. People yeah. don't realize it, it's yeah. a drug. It's actually It does a drug. actually more, more harm than it does good. Yeah. Even though it does do good, it gets like, but then it, I, I feel like, yeah, like you, what you were saying, like it's straight up. Yeah. Down. I don't know, maybe I'm looking at it negatively. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it connected the world greatly, right? Like we wouldn't be here without without social media it's, it's, it's a double-edged yeah. sword yeah. Yeah. it is it really is it yeah. really is but you just have to this be, wouldn't be possible without exactly it, so. of course exactly of course but you yeah. just have to use that tool wisely and not yeah. abuse it yeah right mm-hmm. so i mean it's there but don't just don't get addicted <laughs> you too sorry would you would you guys have the same answer um i'd say moderation mm-hmm. yeah just like with any drug <laughs> <laughs> moderation it, it's good when you need it and sometimes it can be overkill so yeah, yeah balance that out I, I agree with you guys yeah. yeah best movies or favorite movie favorite movie <laughs> uh pulp fiction hands down <coughs> pulp fiction, oh, pulp fiction. Pulp fiction. Man, there's too many. I, I know, I, I know. Off, off the top, of the I can't dome. pick. But off the dome, uh, one of your favorites. It doesn't have to be the favorite. Oh man, I just watched uh, the last movie I watched was Twenty One. Twenty One. That's your favorite. The oh, 20, no, no, no. Oh. It's not oh, necessarily my gambling, favorite. Right? Yeah, the Harvard students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah they did. But yeah, they tried if to... you haven't watched it, it's, it's a really yeah. good movie. You might not be able to understand most of it because it's really entirely based on blackjack. Yeah. Uh, that, no, they made it fairly yeah, easy. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. But mm-hmm. like, it, it's it's such a good movie. Like, I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but I just yeah. watched it, so I, I'm gonna. I'm That's gonna what I'm saying with Hollywood too, because the 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 story of Twenty One is actually an Asian guy, but they used the white actor Ooh, for the Hollywood. Wait, what, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's based on a true story. It's based on a true story. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. That. I didn't know oh, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah like, the Harvard students. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, actually yeah. A new, it was a, yeah. it was based on a true story. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I just didn't know about the Asian. Uh, yeah, he was Asian. He was, he was uh, Chinese. But they use the white actor. Because uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, Hollywood always like the white savior, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, white, white is right, yeah. man. White <laughs> is right. Yeah, or the white villain, bro. White ain't right, bro. Yeah. <laughs> white ain't right. Uh, you guys? Uh, for me, uh, as of recent, well, one of my favorite movies. Like, I have to say, um, the remake of It. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, was, uh, that was really well done. Yeah, I can't wait for the yeah, I, have, I have to watch it. I haven't seen it yet. You gotta watch that. Thing. I, watch I've always. One, oh, first one? The original? The yeah. original I've seen. It's like three hours long. Yeah. 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 I remember I remember renting it from Blockbuster. <laughs> wow. What's that? Four tapes. Four yeah. VHS wow. tapes. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. That was, that was crazy. We were like, <laughs> it, take it out, pop yeah. another one in. Oh, <laughs> and then oh. you gotta like pop it back into the re- rewind. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Be kind. Please rewind. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the sticker, that's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I can barely remember those. Imagine things, getting though. to the like the best part and then, oh, now I got to get the second tape. Yeah. Like, oh man. You get but that was right that it part one. Like with that one was with John Ritter uh, and and those kids. But, oh, that was some scary ass shit. Mm-hmm. I I don't know how Pennywise is in this new one. Great. Um, but Tim Curry playing Pennywise in the original it. Fucking like nightmares for mm. a while. Wow, man. it was that was because it was like no CG, right? Like yeah, back yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. straight up just makeup and effects. Uh, fuck, when he's hiding in the sewer and shit, it's man, like mm. dude, yeah. You gotta see this. You gotta see this. I, I I can't wait. I, I need to watch it. So yeah, mm-hmm. to share. With, with the new one, it's well, basically it's, it's the remake from the original one, right? Yeah, well, yeah, basically, yeah. it's like they pick up like such genuine childhood fears, right? Yeah, and, sure. like they. Yeah. They get that, yeah. and like they, 
and they make you try to remember that stuff yeah. when you were younger and all that right. stuff. And it's like so. What's the ne- the sequel about then? The sequel. It's the second part of the first movie. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. still the yeah. same. Yeah, 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 but yeah, they just yeah, stretch it out over two movies yeah. versus yeah, 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 yeah. So if I watched yeah. all four, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. So they can make it like better. Like, yeah, yeah. Where they've grown up now, yeah, exactly. and then yeah, yeah. okay. And then now they go back after it and mm-hmm. find the, the the brother or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's the same thing. Cool. Did I choose? I didn't choose. Right? No. Oh, I didn't. I'm gonna go over there and I wanna see what he has to say. You already know what I'm gonna say. Yeah. I don't really watch a lot of movies. Yeah. But like uh, the other day, <coughs> Richard recommended me a movie. Yeah. Cause I'm with him for this very moment. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So he recommended me a movie. It's called uh, Good Will Hunting. Yeah. And it's like a good movie. Yeah. Great. I, I watched it. I watched it when you guys told me. Did you, did you yeah, really? Did you watch the whole yeah, thing? Yeah. Great. 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 Yeah. So it, it's about. Um, it's about Matt Damon. It's, it's yeah. So it <laughs> stars uh, Matt Robin Damon, Ben Affleck, yeah. and uh, Robin Williams. And it's about it's about a boy who's like once in a generation genius genius like yeah like he, he can like read a textbook memorize it the page paragraph everything but like he works as a janitor at MIT or something at MIT yeah so he works at, as a janitor and like like every class like the math professor writes a math equation like um, on on the, like the chalkboard that like someone anybody can like look at the chalkboard and answer the, the question, but nobody knows the answer. It's like the hardest math equation ever. Yeah. So this janitor, he's just like, he, he, he's, he's working, he's working, and then he looks at the math equation and he answers the equation. Effortlessly. Effortlessly. Then where no one can answer. And then, like, so the professor's like, profound. He's like, who answered this? Who answered this? Yeah. And yeah, it's just, but the thing is, like, the, the genius, he's like, he's, he hangs around a bad crowd, and like he, he, like, he doesn't really see his potential kind of thing. It's really, really, it's a really good movie, man. Yeah. Like you made me cry a couple times. It's more, it's more than, it's like, it's more about him than it is about his genius. It's yeah. What, yeah. Why it's so great. Yeah. I think. Yeah. No, it's a good film for sure. Good, mm-hmm. good will hunting. Yeah. And the the wordplay on like the title though. Yeah. Is, it will 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 hunting. Yeah, <laughs> well yeah, hunting. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Yeah. So it's great. It's great. It's like double meaning. <laughs> but, um, I guess um. We gotta get into our closing segments. We're gonna running running on time here. Mm-hmm. But uh, last question that I wanna ask, wanna ask Jason. We asked this to every, uh, well, most of our guests. But I wanna change this up a bit. Um, is there any advice you can give to young entrepreneurs wanting to like start their own business out there? Um. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I don't know if you hear much because yeah. I like to get away from a lot of the cliche stuff. So, so the one I would definitely give people is <coughs> take any support from people with a grain of salt. Okay, and what I mean by that is, you, if you have an idea mm. and you get a lot of, you're almost a lot of the times. Yeah, you might get some haters and stuff, and people are like, oh, that's not gonna work. It didn't really happen in my case, right? So, um, when people tell, when you put your idea out there and people are saying oh well, that's a great idea <laughs> be careful with that advice be very careful with that advice um, I think for it to be successful for any business to be successful is whatever you make it to be right because the part of the thing is whenever you're telling somebody what you're doing or an idea and you're trying to get some feedback mm-hmm. chances of it is that you're telling it to somebody that's a friend of yours, a family member, somebody very close to you, right? So chances of that is that they're going to be pumping your tires, right? That, oh yeah, that's awesome. You should totally do it or whatever. If you get if you get caught up in that, like all those sort of kudos and be like whatever, um, it can also fall flat on your face too. And a perfect example is just actually with the with Beta Collective was, I told people about it. Um, I connected with people at city council, <coughs> told them about Beta Collective, told them about co-working and stuff, and everyone's like, oh yeah, totally awesome. I, I actually held some meetups, I held, I held some networking meetups, and the people that came up to me, like, and I did pretty much like a verbal survey, right? What do you guys mm-hmm. think if I did a, a co-working space? Mm-hmm. All of them, like almost 99% of them, oh, great idea. Oh, it's a long time coming. Surrey definitely needs a co-working space. After I opened, where the hell was everyone? Yeah, mm-hmm. The same important. people that I was like, you know, hey, you know, you guys are the ones that told me to, to, to go ahead with this, right? Mm-hmm. I got this grand opening. They didn't show up. Right? Mm. So I was like, the hell, right? Yeah. So 
so it got me kind of just like holy so then you start second guessing yourself like holy what did i you know what did i get myself into dude, yeah right so so i would say as far as advice is concerned take that advice or any any sort of those positive reinforcement just Keep take it, it with a grain of salt because at the end of the day it's the market that's going to determine whether or not you succeed yeah mm-hmm. right not your friends not your family like my mom was so proud of me that i opened beta collective like she's not going to pay this rent yeah you know she's not renting an office yeah. right why so i shouldn't be really taking stock i like the moral support don't get me wrong like mm-hmm. I, I like the fact that you know they you know there's you know tell me to kind of stay determined but man as far as like you know hearing those sort of compliments and, and things like that chances are it doesn't convert it doesn't convert into dollars and cents for you right you got to let the market dictate it right um perfect example is uh, at YVR prep at my kitchen here so many people have amazing or in their heads amazing food ideas you know i got to make the best i don't know fucking Japanese tacos or whatever, right? <laughs> and a cricket burger, cr- cricket protein burgers or whatever, right? Like, you know, it's because they heard about it or their friends said, oh yeah, do it, man. This is awesome. No yeah. one's ever... It's like, don't listen to them. Make it. Go to the farmer's market. Go to Richmond Night Market. Go to any of these markets or sell online and see if you actually get any sales. That's yeah. going to determine whether or not you actually yeah. have something going yeah, on, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, Otherwise, your mom is going to be like, oh, fuck, that's the best, you know, banana bread, you you know, in the world, you know, that's my recipe, Mm -hmm. do it, you know, and if you listen to that and you're in that echo chamber where you're just like, oh, yeah, this is awesome, you know, it can can, can turn around and kick you in the ass because you had, you you thought that you had, you know, like, if you watch Master Chef and all those, Mm -hmm. like, cooking, everyone thinks, like, their food is amazing or, you know, the singers on American Idol and stuff where like, well, my mom told me that I'm an amazing yeah, yeah. singer and all that. Oh, shit. You listen to that, <laughs> yeah, you listen to that advice, man, yeah. and then, and you fall flat. It's, it's crazy, man. You feel it's, that type of way and you fall flat, bro. Right? <laughs> so just be cognizant of that. I would be the biggest thing, you know, don't be too caught up in that. Otherwise, you're, yeah. yeah, you can, set, <laughs> you, you could lose your shirt and you can set it, set yourself up for a failure real fast, yeah. real yeah. hard. And uh, and then then you lose confidence in yourself too because mm-hmm. if you fail, you know what? Did you, why did you fail? Yeah, right. So yeah. that's right. Well, there it is. That's it. If that helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's it. So great advice. <laughs> no problem. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Grain of salt, guys. Remember that. Don't let I don't even guess. know if you guys use those ter- that term anymore, no, no, no. but yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. We get it. Oh, I saw you. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So. Don't let anyone gas you up too much, you know what I mean? Yo, should I jump this clip? Yeah, 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 bro. <laughs> yeah. Nah, man. Nah, nah. Think it through, yeah. Think it through. Think it through, Think it through. Man. Think it through. Because, yeah, at the end of the day, you determine your own destiny, man. Like, That's right. how, it, how it succeeds or fails is all up to you versus mm-hmm. someone gassing you up and giving you props, patterns. That pat on the back, it's nice, mm-hmm. but it's just, that's all it is. It's nice. Yeah, the moral, the moral support is is great. Yeah, but you really have to put your foot forward. Yeah, right. So. right. Don't 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 make that your your measuring stick and be like, okay, you know, mom told me that this was amazing. Mm-hmm. Why is it not amazing? Right? No, let the market determine that. So. That's right. Yeah. All righty. So, thank you everyone for tuning in to the fifteenth episode of the G Town Podcast. Jason, thank you so much for hopping on with us, man. It's oh, man. been a pleasure. Good, man, these 15 good. episodes. Yeah. Happy 15th anniversary? I don't know what you want to call it. Yeah. Happy halfway. Thank you Happy much. Happy halfway. <laughs> but oh, yeah. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We, I, Like always, we appreciate every eye and ear on the podcast. Everyone in the chat, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, Jordan, what's up? Meltic, Eric, thank you, guys. Um, we are also live on Spotify, guys. Please do hit us up on hit us up there as well. We are 12 subscribers away from 100. Please help us right. get hit that us subscribe there. button. <laughs> Please hit, hit that, that subscribe button. Hit that. The notification bell. Everything. Thank you so much. Um, Instagram. Uh, Eric's uh, cooking up some new stuff for the Instagram, so please hit that up soon. Um, new visual arts, key concepts. They're great. Amazing great eye candy uh please do hit that up and thank you again that's it peace hey deuces hey
perfect.